You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the town of Brantford. We will call this meeting of the Brantford Planning Zoning Commission to order. It is Thursday, December 5th. I will introduce members of our commission and staff. To my far right, we have Commission Member John Lust next to John, Commission Member Fred Russo next to Fred, Commission Member Paul Higgins to my left, Commission Member Marcy Pelosi, and next to Marcy is Commission Member Joe Chadwick. Our staff this evening is our Assistant Planner Rich Stecker, and next to Rich is our Town Planner Harry Smith, and in the corner is our Clerk Recording Secretary Michelle Martin. I am Chuck Anders Chair, and I'll ask Marcy, our Secretary, to read our Notice of Public Hearings. The Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Brantford, Connecticut, hereby gives notice of the public hearing to be held on Thursday, December 5th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Brantford Fire Headquarters, 45 North Main Street, Connecticut, to consider the following. One, application number 19-10.5, special exception for an interior rear lot, lot one of a three lot resubdivision located at 292 Leeds Island Road, Giamas <coughs> LLC, care of Massimino Ligori, applicant and owner. Item number two, application number 19-10.7, special exception for an interior rear lot, lot two of a three lot subdivision located at 292 Leeds Island Road, Giamas LLC, care of Massimino Liguri, applicant and owner. Item number three, application number 19-10.9, special exception for an interior rear lot, lot three of a three lot resubdivision located at 292 Leeds Island Road, GMS LLC, care of Massimino Liguri, applicant and owner. Item number four, number 19-10.6, three lot resubdivision located at 292 Leeds Island Road, GMS LLC, care of Massimino Liguri, applicant and owner. Item number five, application number 19-10.8, special exception for an accessory use, non-agricultural farm events located at 736 Main Street, Nozo Properties, LLC, care of Anthony and Audra Nozo, applicants and owners. Item number six, application number 19-10.11, Zoning Regulation Amendment, the addition of a new accessory use food preparation for on-site consumption with a manufacturing facility that produces food or beverage that is also sold at retail for on-site consumption to the IG2 is proposed. Justin Gargano, care of Thimble Island Brewery Company, applicant and owner. At said hearings, all persons will have the right to be heard and written communications will be received. A copy of the application is on file in the Planning and Zoning Commissioner's Office at the Planning and Zoning Department, 1019 Main Street. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, we do have copies of agenda and staff reports up here if you, anyone would like to just come and get one to help yourself. We'll follow our normal format for public hearings. The applicant will go first, uh, make its uh, presentation after the applicant is done. Uh, we open it up for a summary of the staff report and questions from the commission. After that, we open up to the public. We ask that you come forward. There are microphones over here. You speak into the microphone. You identify your name and address for the record. Make your comments. And when that's done, uh, after the public portion, the applicant will have an opportunity to respond to the public portion. We may or may not close the public hearing depending on how it goes. With that, uh, we'll open our first item, which is a continued public hearing, which is Mr. Peter Kustner, 3 Elms Road, this special exception for an oversized accessory apartment. We uh, opened this public hearing on November 21st, and I believe it was continued. Uh, there were some additional uh, site plan details and landscaping that was going to be addressed. And, uh, is the applicant or its representative ready to move on that one? My appearance. I took a fall the other day on the ice. Sure. <coughs> Why don't you grab a mic? Just to. Yes. Excuse my appearance. I took a fall the other day on the sidewalk on the ice and broke my nose and cracked my hip. But I'm here. Okay. Uh, as you know, I was here at the last meeting, uh, and 
We were all approved by both the uh, ZBA and the uh, uh, <coughs> Stony Creek uh, Village District Architectural Review Board unanimously for the proposed barn. The discussion of uh, landscape requirements came up about the barn. Uh, <coughs> the, the, the use of the barn, uh, several uses, but largely for boat storage and uh, traffic in and out. It's the only storage facility I have uh, b between either my house or this property where my tenants are that has any storage that is above floodplain. We've had terrible flooding every place else. So there's no garage on the site at all right now. So the barn is the proposed storage area for both my tenants, me, and my boats. Uh, having said that, uh, there was discussion about uh, landscape requirements uh, being suggested for all around the barn. And I, my argument was that to do that was to basically defeat the use of the barn, which was already approved by the ZBA. There are doors. <coughs> and, uh, this is the Three Elms Road here. There's a door here. There's three doors here and a door here. Absolutely need the uh, ability to get around it back here. This. This property owner back here has plenty of growth. This property over here has plenty of growth. What I did is I colored the <coughs> site plan to show you that which is proposed and that which exists and that which uh, uh, we are uh, <coughs> removing. So everything you see here in the bright green is proposed uh, landscaping. Okay. Everything you see in pink is already existing landscaping. And everything you see in blue is that which has to be uh, torn down to be able to build a building and access the building. Having said that, uh, you also asked for us to redesign the site plan to uh, change the, the level out in front of the, the barn so, that the, uh, so it wasn't such a steep access into it. So it's being regraded here. Uh, and you also asked us to show you where the proposed uh, uh, boat storage is along the uh, rear, rear property line, which if you look at your own zoning book, you'll find that there is no uh, rule against uh, storing boats along the rear property line. Not the side line, not the street line, but the rear property line is not even referenced in the zoning book. Having said that, I'd like to turn it over to Jim, who's with uh, Chris Colo Engineering, and he can go over any details uh, that he's put on here for you. We've tried to comply in every way we can. If you'd like to see photos of what exists, I have them here, uh, and photos of what's proposed to some extent. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Did you want that? No. Thank you. Uh, Jim Preddy, Chris Colo Engineering. I think Peter covered most of what's been added to the plan. Um, I've gone out there and measured up trees and to, to indicate what's actually existing out there, um, which he's highlighted here in pink. Um, uh, the thing to remember here is that we, it, it, even though it is a little bigger, it is in fact an accessory structure to uh, a residence. Um, we are also adding uh, in the front here along in between from the corner to the door and in between the doors around the side We're gonna add some foundation plantings that face three Elms Road um, uh, We have shown all where, where all the door locations are on the new plan if you have that in front of you, but um, uh, Which mimic What this looks like and which was approved by Stony Creek um, uh, Harry just handed me uh, some conditions of approval and um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, we can add some underground drainage um, storage for uh, the roof for the barn. It's not really a big deal. However, we were planning on not actually putting gutters in. So if we're going to leave that up at the town engineer, I could talk that out with him. Maybe he's okay with putting a gravel strip at the base of the um, at the base of the uh, foundation yeah. uh, in lieu of? Yeah, that is not actually new. That um, The only real change here is um, 
proposed um, findings and rework of condition two, but we can look at the wording of that drainage condition. Right. That was a um, staff report from, I think, yeah, a month ago. That's 2B on here. Yeah. Um, the landscaping thing. part, I'm sorry, yeah. I guess that, um, well, you should take a look at what's on here for uh, C. First time I've seen this. Yeah, uh, so for C, for the landscape, <coughs> the rest of it is stuff that you've already known about. Uh, those are the only items that would be different. Well, isn't that what this is? Detailed landscape plan? Uh, <coughs> between that which exists and that which is proposed is all being done where it has a view by the public the streets and from the neighbor over here. Back here, there's plenty of you know natural growth between both on my property and the adjacent property owners, but I don't see provide a detailed landscape plan. Isn't that what this is? So the only thing that would be needed to be added to the plan would be what he actually chooses for the plantings along the front of the building. Um, if, if any, I mean, it's up to the commission. I'm just sort of suggesting this, and I'm not. I mean, we're not really to me yet, but sorry, I get, I'll go if you want me to. Um, it, it would request a or require where you see the uh, two double staggered rows of the uh, compact yes. Japanese holly to continue that up to and stopping at where the boat park storage area is closed. Just, so just filling that in. Yeah, um, is that because you want it or is that because the neighbor wants it? Well, it's because it's a requirement for a... Uh, Rear planting area strip, um, so and it exempts you from boat the boat zone. storage area. So that's a judgment. I mean, I'm just suggesting this. The commission may want plantings in the boat storage area. So I'm just trying to go from what I heard the discussion was tending towards. You know, at the last meeting. So I just thought I'd suggest something. Um, the other thing that seemed, I mean, those uh, compact Japanese hollies are, I think, the 30 inches. This proposed planting size. Yes. Yes. So I'm suggesting replacing those possibly with um, um, arborvitae of a, a six foot, eight foot arborvitae. Where? With these? Where the hollies are and continuing to where you're proposing the boat so now, storage. My understanding, only because I was in the audience when this was at ZBA, is that yep. they were looking for um, uh, vegetation for headlight glare, but they didn't necessarily want to block their view this way. So the arborvitaes may get a little too tall there. We didn't want to block the airflow. Either. Yeah, my understanding is the neighbor may be here tonight. Maybe we want to hear from him first. Um, so, okay. 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 But in any event, uh, extending this up to the boat area is fine. Uh, what was the other thing? And I left an option of, I understand there is an agreement, and I think maybe the neighbor will speak to this more. Um, I don't think enforcing a private agreement between two landowners is something I would suggest the commission consider doing. However, if, um, if Mr. Custer wants to adjust the landscaping plan to address that agreement, um, which I did read through, uh, this would allow him to adjust the landscaping plan to follow the agreement should he choose to do so without coming back to the commission. With all due respect, that agreement is null, void, and not. I'm not, suggest, I'm not saying anything either way about it. I'm just putting, providing an option if, if. He's just giving you leeway to change it. Right. Without going back to the commission. I'm just to comply. This is what was required by the ZBA, low, low plant, plant. Uh, now you want that change to everybody? We can, we can look at the wording here. This is suggested wording to try to come to some kind of uh, middle ground here. Airflow through the property. Uh, it's already a six foot high fence here, so uh, <coughs> a little further, I have no problem with that, but, uh, so from this, from this point of view, there's landscaping to improve that viewpoint, landscaping here to improve the viewpoint from Thimble Islands Road, and landscaping along here to improve the, uh, to improve or Acknowledge what exists, which is publicly, publicly viewed. Is that all you need is 
this year? Well, I'm just suggesting this for the commission to consider. So, I mean, maybe they okay. want to go okay. through the whole process and we can talk about where sure. to go. Yeah. Do, you, do you have anything else at this point? No, I think all these other conditions of approval have either been discussed or okay. It was just a couple of the landscaping questions. Really. Okay, great. Okay. As far as, just to remind you, the approval of the <coughs> by the DBA was the use, location, height, and size. And the, and the hardship was due to the fact that it could not, as an accessory structure, being larger than the typical 15 foot height, 750 square foot detached building. This has to be detached because it can't be attached. Because all this area in here is set aside as future set or future uh, reserve septic. septic area. Right. So that's why this was acknowledged. My other argument was if you have an accessory structure that has boats, gasoline, lawnmowers, cars, etc., it's a potential fire hazard. It's better to be separate from a house than adjacent to the house. That's just my thinking. Okay. Um, anyhow, I did submit something that showed um, the area that Eshore approved as for septic repair. There okay. was and there was a B100 approval that I believe went to I the building department. It. Okay. Because uh, I have a copy of it. So. Okay. 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 Thank you, Harry. Is there anything else you'd like to go over for this at this point? Um, I think um, myself or Rich has gone over everything else. I did suggest one last new condition here, which is number six. And I don't know if, did everyone get this? This has got the um, department letterhead on it. You did not get it? I apologize. We're trying to keep up as best we can here, given our limitations of staffing um, last few weeks. But so I just basically finished this um, this afternoon. Yep. I have it. I know. Let me get things ready. Okay. Um, so just quickly. So here you were mentioning condition six, which is outdoor storage of boats. Uh, right. Maybe I just go back quickly. Um, I think this was covered previously, but just to refresh everyone's memory, um, there was a. Um, Notice of violation issued by former Zoning Enforcement Officer Jennifer Aquino um, back in November 2016. Uh, that was appealed to the Zoning Board of Appeals by Mr. Custer. Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals upheld all the portions of the notice of violation with the exception of the um, number of boats that could be stored on the property. Um, the regulations allow one boat um, larger than 14 feet, I believe. And the ZBA um, considered that the storage of eight boats in the property was grandfathered. Um, so, um, and as Mr. Custer noted, um, storage of boats is allowed in the rear setback, not inside setback, and not in the street line setback. Is that a rear setback? That is a rear setback because okay. it's a corner lot. Basically, he could choose. Okay. Which is going to be side rear. Yeah. So that's been on the plan since the beginning. So um, I think that is correct, and in my opinion, it reflects what the uh, what the situation was when the dust settled at the end of the ZBA uh, appeal. Well, the notice of violation. I'm sorry. No. So does that make sense? I'm just yeah. okay. Everyone's agree with that. Um, so having that as a preamble, <coughs> I just suggested. For sake of clarity, a condition six is said outside storage of boats on this property is limited to eight, 18 foot boats stored only in the area indicated in the site plan approved with this special exception approval. This, the area is indicated right there. Would you read that again? It says outside storage of boats on this property is limited to eight, 18 foot, as noted on the site plan, boats stored only in the area indicated on the site plan right there as uh, you've. No, it's allowable anywhere within. Ah. Uh, well, when you identify in the site plan, basically you're locking yourself in. And that's where I understood you wanted to put them based on what you said at the hearing a month yeah, ago. Your book says they're stored anywhere in, in, in so you plan on storing them anywhere in the property? No, I plan to, I plan to store them here, but once in a while they'd be in, a, in this parking lot down here from time to time, which is a parking lot. Okay. But it would be well beyond the setback lines. Uh, not, in, not, <coughs> not the property lines, but in, in board of the setback lines. So here, for example, the set, setback line is 20 feet. It was in the lot that you, beyond that. The setback line is eliminated over here, but uh, still in all, up against the house. If, if I have to temporarily, 
but this is where, as far as this, uh, the Dennis step back line was debated uh, when I was doing a zoning um, you notice the zoning violation was turned out not to be a violation except on the sideline. Uh, so anyway, that's why we established this. Well, but, just uh, it's a practical matter. This is where we're going to be from time to time, but <laughs> I'm not limited to that. I'm still limited to the eight votes, but legally nobody's limited to, 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 to the store of vote in board of the setback line. Uh, in board, I assume, means if this is the setback line here, anywhere in here, or anywhere in here. That's it. I guess I'm a little confused. I thought one of the comments the commission hearing was it, it's about a month ago was to identify where things are going to happen. But I'm going to leave that there. I mean, the, uh, I'm we can work that out after we get to the end of the public but not hearing. Necessarily required. Okay? As a practical matter, that's what my, mostly my intention is. This is a, a parking lot which is perfectly allowed. Is the boat storage in the parking lot something you do on a permanent basis or a no, temporary basis? No, no. Right there in the, during the summertime, that's uh, for my uh, uh, tenants in the building across the street, my dock tenants, and, and my overflow of my tenants here in, in this building. I mean, excuse me, in this building. So, and that's all been approved. That's ancient history. Yeah, it, the reason it was approved, just so you know, is I established that uh, the town had taken all the land. That I was just trying to comply with other zoning regulations which says if you have a two-bedroom apartment, you have to have two off-street parking places. And so there's two two-bedroom apartments in the building across the street. There's tenants on the first floor and so forth. And <laughs> the town took away all the land surrounding that building on three sides, leaving the building, the, this building here, leaving this building. <coughs> Marine building, leaving that building border to border for the street. No land at all. In 1925, the town took all that land. So I'm simply trying to comply with the other building regulations. Right, right. I mean, what, what, one of the issues is that you need a certain number of parking spaces for the units that you have right. on the site, so you can't use that for any permanent boat storage if they're reserved for parking for the site. Oh, so, so and, and what I'm trying to figure out, that's why I asked, it sounds like that's the permanent boat storage area. You can leave them there forever, you know, eight boats and that. You can have eight boats, you can put them there and they can stay there forever. And what I was wondering is just, you know, <coughs> that's why I said temporary, do you like have them on a trailer and leave them there, you know, for how long a period? I, I mean, that's what I'm wondering. Just so you know, as a practical matter, uh, yeah, a fair number of these are going to be in the barn. Sure. The time. That's fine. We're just, just about outsourced storage, yeah. I was asking if, if they're here, how long are they usually there? Uh, well, sometimes I've had them there during the winter, but if I can have some of them over here, some of them, once the barn's built, some of those are going inside. So I don't really see this being used very much at all. These but, are all uh, your personal boats? Ones, not okay. Yeah, this is not commercial boats at all. So you own okay. eight boats for your own personal use? Yeah. When I bought this property in the year 2000, the 1999 zoning regulations were in place. And I, when I recited them, showed the zoning enforcement officer that, I said boats and trailers. Well, where I went to school, let's spoil. And uh, so I became grandfathered by the ZBA on the number of boats. Having said that, I said these are not commercial boats. It's my personal hobby, my passion. And, uh, and, and I'm in a boating community. <laughs> So, well, I'm just trying to figure out if you keep all eight box boats in the water in the summer, if you're just, you know, summer, you're summer. just kind of going back and forth and moving them. Yeah, and some, some need some work, so I bring them in the building and be able to work on the side. But uh, gotcha. not commercial. This is not a commercial use at all. So it's it's just a lot of boats, ah. so you start to think in that direction, but I understand. Yeah. Thanks. Anyway, so I'm just giving you some of the past history here. Right. Okay. Any members of the commission have questions or comments? Anything about the landscaping, Marcy, you want to ask about? I just, you know, I think it's in the conditions just to have a clear plan of what's staying, what's going, what kind of plants. Okay. Uh, just to address you, you asked that we regrade the surface out here in front of the barn to make it more accessible, which 
Well, yeah, I'm trying to get a sense of how much traffic's going over that septic area and whether grass is really going to survive. And but it looks. This is going to remain lawn, and it's going to be you know occasionally used to get a pole in and out of the door. Kind of right. That's why I was kind of asking about the personal use and how much. Not a, it's not a lot of traffic. It's a couple but, times a year. Exactly. But the area under the boats would be gravel. Is that why that's got a hatch there? Uh, we were hatching in to show um, the area, basically, but... It, it would still be on the lawn? Maybe seashells. Yeah, okay. guys got to use the mics. Sorry nice, about that. Which is a nice look because I have seashells down here. That's a very... You got to use the mic, too. I use yeah. the mic. Can, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I can hear uh, you. It's seashells. Um, there's seashells in all this lot here, <clears throat> and they're very... It's very nice looking. It helps uh, uh, resist some of the weed growth, and... Uh, uh, I don't, I mean, it can be lawn or it can be, but the lawn's harder to keep from growing, going So it's crazy. probably going to be seashells. Yeah. Because and, that's uh, kind of what I meant by gravel. But they, don't, they don't really compact like style does. So there, yeah. It's water filters through. Permeable. Permeable. Yeah. Have you ever seen the sh parking lot down there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, any, anything else? At this yeah. point, let's open up to the public then. Any members of the public wish to comment? As you come forward, grab a mic, identify your, give your name and address for the record. Yeah, hi, uh, Sam Morris. I'm his neighbor to the south. I'm at 214 Thimble Island Road. Um, so <clears throat> you guys have, uh, I guess, in the first um, meeting of, uh, for his special accessory, uh, Tim Lee submitted a letter to ask for, uh, I believe it was, to ask if our private agreement could be added as a condition of approval. And um, I didn't go to the past that last meeting. And anyways, I heard that uh, Mr. Custer said that it's null and void, so and so, and which it's not. And uh, <clears throat> so I wrote a letter to just try to give you guys some backstory and explain why it's pretty frustrating dealing with this. But uh, but at the end of the day, um, he, he has an <coughs> agreement with me, which he got <coughs> before he ever got his variance to put the barn there in the first place, which. If that didn't take place, we would have never been here. Um, he wanted me on his side, which I understand, and I really didn't ask for anything other than give me some landscaping because he's up on a hill. I mean, once that building's up, at you know foot level, ground level of my property to ground level where his barn is, it's at least 10 feet. I ballpark it at. So you know, when you're standing there, you're looking right down into my yard, and uh, six foot fence means nothing. It's, it just overwhelms it. So anyways, long story short, I'll keep it short. I know there's a lot of people go, um, that are here to speak tonight. So uh, I have that landscaping plan in there for a reason, and uh, I hope you guys can accommodate that. May I respond, please? Not yet. Not yet. Um, and, and your landscaping plan, what what sort of, was it Arborvitaes or what was Mine is it's simple. I did this, you know, this, he, grabbed me last second and we did this last second. I didn't even have a landscaper come and look at it. So we basically did, which was a very, I'm very unhappy with what I signed off on, but it is what it is and I agreed to it and so did he, but it's a, I believe it's a, I think it's a four foot spacing of Arbor, or a six foot or four foot spacing of Arborvitaes um, along my fence line on his side. I have a funny lot and it kind of like, is, it starts within five feet of my house. So make a long story short to that, he and I agreed to uh, put it on his side of, on his, on his property side of my fence um, where it actually could grow a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's the gist of it. It's just basically to block it out because it's going to be a very imposing, you know, structure. And that's what we agreed to. Do, he uh, agreed to. Aside from what you agreed to, do you have any comments on what he's proposed to I do? I haven't seen it. I, this is my first. Yeah. He, he doesn't show it. Landscaping is... Grab a mic, uh, or if you want. So it sounds like you wanted a tall vertical landscape barrier towards where the barn is, as opposed to towards the street line. Yeah, it's all vertical. So this is the Llewellyn Road. Yeah, yeah, right. So my constant, my concern is the back portion. Um, this is my house, so it's basically from this side and back. That was all of this. He knows is illegal according to our agreement, but he doesn't care anymore. I guess so. That wouldn't be possible based on what our agreement is because. Uh, they're all Arborvitaes that are supposed to be planted there. So I don't know what else to tell you other than that's what I have on paper with him. But uh, 
We know he doesn't want to do it because uh, he has submitted plans to the contrary. Okay. So I guess, no, I don't agree with the landscaping. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. May I respond? Not yet. Any other members of the public wish to comment? Good evening. Hi, I'm Barbara Chesler. I live at 8 Three Elms Road uh, in Stony Creek, kind of caddy corner to the property. Um, I just want to, I had three questions that have now come up since the last meeting on November 21st. Um, one is, I just want to make sure there's clarification when we talk about eight number of boats on the property, is that eight boats and, and trailers, eight boats and or trailers inside, and then he could actually have eight boats and or trailers outside the barn, or is it eight boats and or trailers on the property? So that's one question. Harry, do you have an answer to that? Uh, my understanding is the limit is eight boats outside the barn. Inside the barn, I don't think the, uh, the segments limit the number of boats. It's however many he can get inside the barn. So in theory, there could be 16 boats on the property. Yeah, this is addresses the outside storage. Right. Okay. But at any one time, there can only be eight boats. And so what happens if there's more than eight boats outside? The bro uh, outside? Well, it's in violation. Because the ZBA has determined that eight boats is the limit of the grandfathered number of boats that could be kept outside on the property. OK. So and then what? I mean, then it has to be brought in front of this commission? Or how does that work? Well, the. Uh, the way you go about it is you have to complain to the zoning enforcement officer who would investigate and uh, send a letter and potentially notice a violation. Okay. So the next question I had is, so what exactly is the setback requirement on Thimble Islands Road and Three Elms Road? Because again, that seemed to be, we're talking about having the dumpster moved into the parking lot, correct? And I, I'm not sure I saw that on right. the site plan. Right. The dumpster location is... Okay, so it would either be removed or moved in. Okay, it doesn't There's a location for it on the site plan and basically what was the first parking space. I can show you. Sorry, just for the. So right now it's, of course, on the corners going into the town right of way. So the location is basically on the other side of this proposed landscaping in here. This is, uh, this is 15 this feet, is so you're talking about maybe three or four or five feet. Okay. So in a layer. From, from the, this is the sidewalk. That's the sidewalk. The sidewalk, and it must be five feet. Right? About five feet, something like that, yeah. Okay. All right, that's fine. That's good. Um, and, um, and then uh, I think we, uh, the last meeting, we also had a question if there was a time frame on how long does one have to get a, a structure built once given a permit. Can this go on for years, or does it have to be done in a certain period of time? Uh, I think it's five years. There's right? a five-year limit with a five-year extension. Um, the building permit, I believe, is a year, and I think there's an extension process to that as well. I think it's another year, but I'm not 100% certain of that. Okay. All right, so again, I just want to reiterate or confirm that um, the there's not a permit for the barn, the building of the barn until all the work that's required by the, the, all the former work required by the ZBA is completed prior to any new construction. Is that correct? Harry, isn't that suggested as That's suggested as a condition of the approval that all the improvements that were shown on uh, the latest site plan that was a part of the ZBA application at the uh, hearing on the 24th of May, and we have that plan right here if you want to take a look at it. It was, I think, submitted yeah. May 1st, or was, was revised to May 1st. Okay, because so, I mean, we're now like, you know, I don't even know where we are. There's almost 17 months or something since all that, and nothing's yeah. happened. So I just want to make sure that the operative word here is prior. Yes, that's the suggestion. The commission would have to adopt that, of course. But that's, right. but that's a suggestion, or is that what's going to happen? Well, we well, haven't we voted yet, so, <laughs> but that's the recommendation. Okay, the rec okay. That's the right. recommendation that Sounds Okay, good. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Any other members of the public wish to comment? None? Okay, Mr. Kostner, do you, yeah. Mr. Prady, have any responses? Excuse me. Just to address what she was just talking about, the only reason it took so long to do this is I was t denied by the 
Zoning Enforcement Officer, Jennifer Aquino, saying I could not do that work as long as it was being appealed in the court. So I dropped the court appeal so I could go ahead and proceed with this. Uh, and, our, and the agreement we made the other, in our last meeting was uh, I, I disagreed with that uh, zoning permit being uh, held up due to the, the uh, uh, delay and the, uh, the other uh, improvements, including the, uh, <coughs> the other landscaping and the, and the relocation of the dumpster. And I said I would like it to be tied to the building permit because the zoning uh, laws change all the time. So I want to get through the zoning issue. I'm perfectly willing to, to hold back on the construction of the barn through the building permit until that other stuff is done. I'd like to do it all at the same time. But the only reason it was held back all that time was because of the zoning enforcement officer refusing to allow me to do it. I called her up to say, I'm about to tackle it. I'm a little late in doing it, because I, but I have a contractor now. She said, oh, you can't do that. In fact, you can't even talk to me. You have to talk to your lawyer, and your lawyer has to talk to the town attorney. I said, but you're the zoning enforcement officer. I'm just trying to get this straightened out. Anyway, that's the issue. I'm perfectly willing to, to uh, make that, a, and, I, and I mentioned it last time, I'm perfectly willing to make that a condition of the building permit, but not for the zoning permit, because the zoning laws change all the time, and I don't want to have to address this again if I can help it. As for Sam Morris, uh, with all due respect, it's a complete lie, and I'll tell you why. That, that written agreement refers to a, uh, a revised map uh, showing the proposed uh, plantings, which was never included with the agreement, issue number one. Issue number two, it required certain limitations that the town would not allow, therefore making it illegitimate. And number three, it was they were, they, they were in violation of the so-called agreement because if you look at the agreement, there's a provision in there that says this is not to be submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals because it was an arrangement between ourselves. And what did they do? They submitted it to the Zoning Board of Appeals and then you, you can research it and you'll see that there's a stamp when it was received. Having done that, th that agreement is completely null and void. Now, he has had no problem whatsoever for 12 years for the location of the dumpster or the parking or anything else, but all of a sudden he's holding me ransom to spend thousands of dollars on, on Arborvitae's along the, on the wall, along the property line, common property line, for his privacy. There's no, why do you need privacy from a barn in which nobody lives? If he's so hung up on privacy, why is he surrounded on three sides by houses that would be less than 20 feet from the road? Now, what he has done since then, I've done so many things for this guy to help him out, when he did his renovations, okay? And he went and he got a building permit for $20,000 worth of work and did roughly $150,000 worth of work. The building permit was for, for windows and trim. Instead, he did, he did that and then added a lot more windows and trim, added a roof, added a bedroom, added a deck with no building permit, no zoning permit, no health department permit, no nothing. He has an undersized zoning thing. More and more over than that, he's pumping his basement. Oh, okay, okay. So, let me just finish, that, please, please. I want you to. It, it's I, not. I it isn't part of it. Yeah, and we got a big agenda. To his, I want to respond to him. I, I understand. This guy has been pumping his basement water right on top of my septic system, making that a problem. His fence is on my property, his gate is on my property, his pool filter is on my property, his uh, bluestone terrace out there is on my property. The, this guy has cheated me, and he's cheated the town. No, okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. Any other questions from any members of the commission? Uh, uh, no, okay. Okay, uh, then we can uh, close this matter as a public hearing. We may or may not take this uh, up later. Uh, so thank you very much. Excuse me? Who's voting tonight? Oh, um, who's voting tonight? I don't know who. Yeah, anyone, you can all participate in public hearings whether you're voting. I tonight. think it's um, Paul. Paul? So I think Fred, you were. Yeah, I think Paul's so. yeah. Okay, Paul. great. Okay, so second item uh, is 339 West Main Street, LLC. And uh, is the applicant here on that? Oh, great.
this also is a continuation of a public hearing. Jim Preddy, Chris Golo Engineering, um, representing um, 339 West Main Street LLC. Um, so we did present this before. This is a car storage area uh, to be used for a brand front Honda, uh, adjacent to an, uh, another lot with a car storage area. Um, I don't recall what was outstanding from the last meeting, but we did address a number of things. Um, uh, there's a lighting plan that was submitted. Uh, we did submit, uh, I just got it today, unfortunately, but we did submit language for easement um, to um, drain and pass and repass over the other lot. Uh, okay, I did not filed. see that before the meeting. Okay. I did, I did submit the language. Okay. Uh, it's in draft form. If the special exception is approved, it will get filed. Um, it doesn't make any sense to file it if we don't get approval. Sure. Um, uh, street trees have been uh, depicted on here. I did talk to the tree warden. He chose um, pin oaks away from, where, or away from the car. Something else or near the cars. Yeah. Uh, but, but anyhow, I did get recommendations from for street trees. Um, um, did the easement include a right to drain? Because I think that was the it other was, issue. It was, uh, the easement included a uh, right okay. to drain from 339 over 333 into the detention basins and also rights to pass and repass across 333 um, for this use, basically. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yeah, uh, I, pretty. Uh, don't. I believe those were the outstanding issues. Sure, Harry. Uh, what there were there other outstanding issues? Uh, there may have been a couple of the small things, but I don't think there's anything that couldn't be covered by conditions. Um, since we just got the information, I, I don't have anything prepared. Right. Um, so I think um, if you do close the hearing, um, I request that you uh, table this to January 9th so we can prepare something and go over all the information that was just submitted and draft some proposed conditions up okay. for consideration for a vote. Well, what was one of the issues that the <coughs> improvements on the other lot, on the existing lot, hadn't been completed? Was, was that? Well, I think that was part of it. So that drainage, the right to drain, I right. think um, would include, and I think there was uh, some analysis that was done by yes, you, the, talked the about was, with the town engineer about the sufficiency of that right. basin to handle all the water coming off both properties. Originally, when this was uh, proposed there was more to it and there was a second detention basin so we did the analysis on this based on that being installed and so that that needs to be installed for this to be acceptable um, okay drainage wise for the town engineer okay so you had a second detention basin that would be part of Not this and, and they're well, linked together right yeah I think wasn't that part of the approval on it the was part lot, of the but it never got done that's so it would definitely need to be done for that and now for this. Right, because there, there was more to the other thing. There was a possible building that, uh, that yeah. never got happened. So there was more yeah. to it, and that's okay. why that never happened. But yeah. now it will need to for this to be acceptable. Okay. Are the trees ever planted? In the, I'm just trying to refresh my memory. As I um, recall, the trees weren't planted. The, the street on, trees are not planted. And, and, and the sidewalks weren't planted. And that's one of the other things that I mentioned this. to the tree warden was that they haven't gone in yet, so if you want to change. change them, now's the time. Right. So. The sidewalk was delayed. I, mean, I think that was going to be constructed, and they came back and said, um, oh, we now don't buy the building, and um, they just need more time. So I think you gave them three years, but I think right. now the proposal is to build the sidewalk all along both properties. As right. It'll get built all at once now. Okay. Now, I don't believe that building's up yet, right? No. There's no, 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 there's no. I don't think there's any active plan to do it at this point, right? Uh -huh. it's just that's part a building, not a pad. On that's, the that's, I it's showed it on here. It was a future building, yeah. okay. but like it, a phase two. It was a phase. Yes, yeah, right. <coughs> Any questions from anyone? Open up the public. Any member of the public wish to comment? Perry Marska, uh, chairman of Economic Development in Town. Um, this was brought up at our um, latest meeting, and the commission is in favor of it. Uh, Brantford has, has been a, um, uh, an asset to the town of Brantford 
since they've been here for a couple of decades, and it, we were very happy to see that they're growing. So thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to comment? Seeing none, Ms. Pretty, you have any um, The only thing I would request, and not to push, but um, winter is quickly approaching, as we noticed earlier this week. Um, part of the issue with doing this is he needs a place to put these new cars because he needs to plow snow at the store. Um, so the tabling this till January for the conditions just adds a whole other month to the winter for them. Um, um, I have an idea, but I can discuss it with you offline. Maybe we can get it done in the next couple of weeks. So. Can we put it on the special meeting? Exactly, yeah. That yeah. was my idea, just to yeah. Yeah, get it done. We have okay. a special meeting. Maybe we next can week. add to the agenda next week. Okay. We've been resisting adding things because it's <laughs> the pressure will build, but this one will be pretty straightforward and there will be a public hearing, so. Okay. Okay. Are you closing Thank you. the public okay. hearing tonight? <coughs> yes. Okay, so we will close this matter as a public hearing. Brings us to uh, item number three on our agenda. Item number three or four are 21 Summit Place, special exception for incentive housing overlay district apartments. Uh, that's a zoning map amendment, and that's uh, continued to our meeting of January 9th, item numbers three and four. So if you're here on that one, that's uh, taking place on January 9th. Brings us to item number five. Number five, six, seven, and eight. These are four related applications concerning 292 Leeds Island Road. Uh, special exception for interior lots uh, and a re three lot resubdivision. Is applicant ready to proceed on that? Yes. Um, Jim Predick, Griscoll Engineering, representing the applicant uh, for 292 Leeds Island Road, which is the larger piece shown here in red. Um, uh, the, the maps depict 292 and 300, um, which is also owned by the same entity um, because there's a lot line revision as part of this. Um, so we included them both. Uh, but the property here at 292 is um, just, just over eight acres and the, and the lot in the front is uh, just under 1.5 acres. You can see this property originally um, this, these lots were cut out of it and there was a 50 foot right away left for it looked like maybe a road was planned because there were radius, radii um, in the uh, right away that was left. Uh, the rear of the property, uh, there's a ridge roughly here. The rear of the property drops down into a wetland area. Um, that um, The trailer park is here and then the big Collins piece is down here. Tanglewood subdivision is on the back side. Property, the pro proposal is to create three lots in this rear property with a large 4.4-acre uh, 4 4 um, open space dedication um, that I've met with the land trust and they've reviewed the project and it's something that they are interested in. Um, but these would be the three new lots here. The lot line is being revised for this house to provide the third um, fee strip to the other lot. We've shown Um, we've shown potential house layout, uh, driveway layout, uh, septic and well um, configurations. Again, these are potential. We don't, until lots are sold, we don't know the size of the house. Each lot would be required to have its own individual on-site storage, uh, stormwater storage system based on whatever size of the roof ends up being. Could be half this, could be twice this. Um, until it's sold, you don't know. Um, we did get wetlands approval. Um, for this, basically, the plan is, as we've shown, is all the activities outside the 100-foot regulated area. Anyway, um, I did just very late today get uh, a letter from East Shore Health Department that says that each lot will need additional soil testing when it comes in for a septic system, but for subdivision approval, it meets the requirements for the health department. Um, and so that's basically the crux of why we're here. Uh, so there will be fee strips to each lot, but the plan is to have a common driveway in the first uh, couple hundred feet, an 18 foot wide driveway, and then there'd be individual driveways off. And we'd have a hammerhead uh, here so that an uh, ambulance or a UPS truck or something can turn around and get out. 
How wide is that front driveway? Uh, 18 feet, which I believe is the regulations. Um, so it would be just a single 18 foot wide driveway at the street line. Thanks. Uh, anything else? I believe that's <coughs> Harry, uh, did you prepare the staff Actually, reports? Actually, yeah, Rich did or Rich? Uh, some yeah. reports yeah. since he's been back since Monday. So. Um, yeah, um, so we're doing, doing uh, special exceptions for the proposed three lots, interior lots, uh, so they have to meet with certain uh, other bulk requirements uh, have to be exempt. Um, yeah. Have to be, uh, you know, one and a half times the minimum lot size, which they are. Uh, minimum frontage on uh, State Road 25 feet, which is the fee strip. And a maximum number of lots that can be served by a driveway is four. These are three that were proposed. Um, buffers and screening. Uh, a landscape buffer may be required by the commission to ensure the development of interior lots will be in harmony with surrounding areas. We did put together landscape requirements that uh, have been uh, that were not included. Uh, uh, front yard landscaping requirements. Uh, this is missing and may not be applicable for rear lot configurations. Side and rear landscaping in residential zones. A uh, strip of at least 10 feet is required for side and rear yards. This requirement is missing and needs to be added to the site development plan or waived by the commission. Uh, planting bed requirements, regulations require that the special exceptions located in residential zones. Planting beds, the length of which shall be at least 40% of the circumference of the building. The revised landscaping <coughs> plan needs to include perimeter landscaping along the, the front uh, foundation of the proposed building. Um, and so then, Before we get past that, can, yeah. I, can I ask, I, and I know it wasn't that long ago, um, there was a regulation change for interior lots um, to become, to be made special exceptions. And I believe I understand why um, there was a, some cases where there was an existing neighborhood and the lot was deep and they wanted to split it in half and that was coming up quite a bit. Um, and, 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 it, and it's not just a question for this, there's other areas. When you have a, a whole subdivision and there are some interior lots, was it the intent that any one of those also becomes special exception because then you have all these landscape requirements that don't normally apply to single family homes that are now mm -hmm. required to be applied to a single family home? Yeah, I think that was uh, an oversight. I think that's a regulatory glitch that we should be addressing because I think you're correct that it makes no sense. I think we've waived it maybe two or three times where we've had a two-family come in, for example. It's another situation where it often doesn't make any sense to have that. I mean, I think that was really envisioned for something like uh, some kind of institutional building or uh, some other kind of building in the residential zone where you want to have significant landscaping to blend it in with the neighborhood. But it doesn't make any sense with a, a residential structure, I don't think either. But at the moment, we've got the regulations, so I think the tool we have is to, what we've been doing, at least temporarily, until we fix the regs, is waive the landscape requirements where it doesn't make any sense, basically. Right. So, no, that's a fair comment. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So that, that's what we note, uh, the support a request. <coughs> For section 6.3L for the waiver of the full landscaping required by special exceptions for interior lots when warranted by, again, excellence in uh, landscape design. Uh, off street parking is uh, two, required two spaces per residential unit. Uh, uh, the site development plan shows the proposed four bedroom house with a driveway hammerhead turnaround, uh, able to accommodate two parking spaces and maneuverability on the site. Outdoor lighting, we just note that, uh, uh, you know, the lighting will consist of residential fixtures under 900 lumens. No lighting was proposed. Grading is shown on the plan for septic system installation and driveway grade. Other excavation appears to be limited to that needed for creation of foundation and basement. And I think the key, one of the key issues is uh, drainage and stormwater control. 
each house in this <coughs> re-subdivision will have an individual stormwater storage element designed for the roof area of the actual house that is selected. The houses depicted on the subdivision map are not the final house plans, as stated. The houses in the subdivision are located on a ridge running, uh, running north-south north -south, uh, toward the wetland on the east side of the ridge. Right. Yeah. And uh, and toward the wetland on the uh, drains, he's running across the existing site drains toward the street on the west side of the ridge and toward the wetland on the east side. Soil erosion and sediment control is, is noted on the plan. Uh, driveways once again, uh, the twelve their twelve foot driveway extend, <coughs> extends off the main uh, eighteen foot driveway. The length, access, width, driveway gradient requirements have been met. The required site triangle for the intersection of the main driveway and Leeds Island Road shall be noted on the <coughs> site development plan with the addition of a 25-foot site triangle, uh, which we've been requiring lately. The requirements uh, of section 6.12 and 6.11 interior lots uh, for the lot have been met. And another uh, Town-wide considerations, the interior lot access, length, and emergency services turnaround is consistent with devel other development patterns for interior lots in Brantford. The single-family residential units will be served by private wells and on-site septic systems. The use of rear lot driveways would limit road infrastructure disturbance and cost. So and the three-lot resubdivision uh, re will be donating open space to the Brantford Land <coughs> Trust, which is about four, you know, half the half the property size, about four acres, I think, four point four point eight acres. And I think uh, at this point, site drainage issues need to be further addressed by uh, Chris Cole Engineering, approved by the town engineer John Hefferly. Uh, I think that's. Uh, other agency reviews in the Wetlands Commission reviewed the plan, held a site walk and approved the plan. Town engineer reviewed the preliminary plans and submitted the following comments. Uh, low impact development shall be considered. Roof leaders, footing drains and sump pumps, if utilized, should be directed to the east away from septic systems and treated through uh, low impact development methods uh, to infiltrate and limit the impacts to the wetlands. The shared driveway runoff should also be treated using low impact uh, methods of water quality and to promote infiltration. We have a listing of um, uh, some conditions uh, and an alternate uh, landscape plan may be uh, considered by the Planning and Zoning Commission upon written waiver request by the, the applicant. And I, and I think the key, uh, again, was to provide stormwater storage structures and or grading revisions to the satisfaction of the town engineer to capture roof, driveway, yard drainage from all of the lots. This, so this is lot one, but basically it, it uh, refers to lot two and three. And this has the uh, site development uh, plan. So basically, that's for each special exception for one, two, and three lots. Right. Now, we we'll also have the three subdivision, uh, three lots as it is. Um, and noted again that all three lots served by private wells, septic, private septic systems. Uh, Property does not adjoin or abut property in a neighboring town and requires scrog notification per section 8.26. The lots are not located in a coastal management area. The proposed street or it's storm drains, no proposed street or storm drains join uh, State Highway. Uh, the bulk requirements are met in terms of lot area, setbacks, etc. No public utilities are planned for under, underground installation. Uh, the, uh, street numbers shall be placed at the intersection of the public street. Yeah, yes. the, and that, the street numbers, that's fine. And the utilities, I think that's a requirement for any new house. Yeah, now. I I didn't, just, we didn't show it on the plan, but okay, that's, that's what part I just, of it. That's yeah. what I wanted, yeah. So that, that is requirement, yeah, so you know that. So that would be the cable and the, 
uh, gas. There's no gas or water well, like available here. Electric. So it's um, on private wells? Yes. Um, yes, okay. and they're on the plan that the health department reviewed with the septic systems to ensure the setback requirements. All right. The separating distances. I don't know if we got any documentation from them about that yet, did we? We just. Uh, it, that's what I did it's mention before. It just came today. It was just. It's a very simple letter saying that each lot will need to come back for a, a individual review with an additional soil testing, and that it, as far as the subdivision, he recommends approval because it meets the requirements as far as that goes. Um, I gave that to Rich earlier. I have another copy here. No, yeah. that's all right. I didn't know if it was on the letter. <clears throat> so we have the three individual special exception um, lots and then also the, the overall resubdivision. So I think the, it's a soil erosion sediment control uh, and grading was, was addressed on the, on the plans. We've talked about the driveways. Um, obviously no sidewalks in that area in terms of Leeds Island Road. Uh, in the sewerage, uh, when I when today when I wrote this up, uh, private uh, individual on-site septic systems, primary and reserve, have been located on the lots. All the deep test pits were performed on the lots, and tables shown on the site development plan. The lots require evidence that all that the lots will adequately satisfy the requirements of the state health code for on-site septic systems and not endanger public health, safety, or general uh, welfare. Section 4.04 .04 of the subdivision regs states the commission shall not approve any lot where insufficient evidence has been provided with regard to sewage uh, disposal to satisfy the requirements of the state health code. So, um, so we have that in the same uh, instance uh, for water. Uh, there's going to be public well, I mean private wells. Right, and, and this has come up before in the, right. in the subdivision. Um, there's a sub the two wells lines. in the right. septic or purview of the health department, and then the health department is saying it's okay for subdivision yeah. approval, but each lot has to come back. Right, but we got something, both look at what we were offered the last time. I think we made a, had a couple iterations to the two-lot subdivision further down Leeds Island before. But this doesn't seem to say anything about wells per se, so... It's part of the review because we have to maintain separating distances between the wells and the systems. And yeah, he just hasn't said it, so I don't know. Yeah, why, but. I wasn't able to uh, get a hold of Alex. Yeah. Um, right. th that came in right at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and uh, another uh, issue would be uh, fire protection, uh, main driveway with a 18 foot wide width provides a hammerhead emergency turnaround. Fire marshal shall be contacted in order to gauge the adequacy of the site development plan for emergency service operations. Again, I didn't get a chance to talk to uh, uh, Sean Heffernan, fire marshal. I tried as well. I didn't get him either. Yeah. So my recommendation just was that we table this to January 9th, 2020 meeting to receive additional information pertaining to the open space set aside, which is... Uh, Pretty well said. Uh, the Brantford Land Trust has um, accepted the uh, the 10 percent or 4.8 acres of uh, open space set aside. Drainage calculations and East Shore Health District correspondence for water supply and septic systems meeting the state public health code. And correspondence from the town fire marshal on emergency service access. So that was the, the resubdivision uh, aspect <coughs> of the project, and then the other three lots went through the special exception per individual lot, and they meeting all of the bulk requirements. And all. Okay. Any uh, any questions from commission members? Can you look at the drainage uh, on this? Um, so again, these are single-family lots, so we'll address. The, the development of each lot on each lot. Um, the question about the common driveway came up in the staff report, and um, I will talk to um, the town engineer about that. He mentioned maybe putting a swale alongside of it, which is there's there's room for it, so it's not an issue. Does it typically drain mostly uh, into the wetlands now, or towards the road? There's there's a ridge right where we've shown these houses, so this all drops down that way, and this 
comes more or less this way, but this, this area through here, um, the house is kind of perched, but all around behind the house and all around this side is pretty flat. So do you anticipate a lot of grade changes? When you no, actually, not at all. So what's the grade of that driveway up the middle? Up the driveway? From the uh, hammerhead, yeah, like in there. What's that? Uh, I, think, well, I think we're like 10% for a short stretch of it. So the common driveway is going to be 18 feet wide. Yeah. It's on a 25 foot strip of land. Or it will be? It, it'll be in the uh, in primarily in the center uh, fee strip. But there are three fee strips together and all three lots will have um, shared access. So that's a 75 foot width for Basically, one driveway. One driveway. Right. Yeah, so yeah, it's a 25, yeah. 25, 25, but they're just using the them together. Is my understanding. Yes, right. We thought that was the best scenario here in, in lieu of actually building a road with a cul-de-sac that the town's not going to want a, another dead end to take care of. And, and it doesn't, the, the cost wouldn't justify uh, the ends here because there are not public water and sewer and gas here that we could extend. Yeah. So. I mean, this makes the most sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, I put the hammerhead on here that I believe the fire marshal want. He hasn't commented on it, so I'm not sure, but that would be a minor adjustment, I'm sure. Um, we can address the drainage along the common driveway uh, to the satisfaction of the town engineer without a problem, because we have a 75 foot width here to play around with. Um, and then we did get, it was late, but we did get a nod from the health department. So. Are the driveways gonna be gravel or uh, um I suspect because of the slope, they'll slope. be paved, but that's really up to the homeowner. True, but I mean the main... Oh, in, the, in here? Um, we had intended it to be gravel because there was always a gravel drive there, so... What's the distance from the street back to about where the houses are? Like, it's From here to here? Yeah, about. Um, is that 200 feet, 500 no, feet? this is about 200 here, so it's a little more than 300. In, any other questions? Do you anticipate being able to um, preserve the tree cover towards the back of the lot where you're not doing any grading for driveways? Yeah, this, so behind here, um, once you get past these houses, it does start to drop down pretty quick, so I don't imagine you'd be able to do anything back there anyway. So the trees that are there would most would be staying. Um, the uh, land trust has walked the property. They are interested in the property. Uh, there was a couple of things they asked for deeded rights to pass through the lots to get to there, because right now it's landlocked for them. Mm -hmm. um, there is a potential for a large wetland area on this property, but that's not up for uh, discussion yet. Um, the wetland review area be designated a no disturbance area, and uh, and we provide boundary markers for them, mm -hmm. which is all acceptable. Are those red dash lines for erosion control or something? Yeah, that's or? just where I highlighted that. This this was the plan I used for wetlands, and I just highlighted where the silt fence. So it kind of, <coughs> kind of showed where the limits of disturbance for the house construction would be. Outside of the upland review area? Yes. Yeah. Is there any other contiguous open space, or is it just that? Uh, there there is, the but side. like I said, there's a large, very large open space on this property down yeah. here. And so, yeah. you know, uh, looking to the future, they're hoping right. to maybe get that at some point. Yeah, that's a pretty large wetland system going south. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. The pretty property immediately the to the north too. is a trailer park, so I don't yeah. know that that's going to happen. But this is a very large property down there, Collins property. Does that rise back up in the middle mm. between the two wetland areas? Uh, it, it, it does. Um, maybe 10 feet at the highest point, but the rest of it's not quite so much. So that acts as a as a buffer to the Tanglewood the sub That's subdivision. That's yeah, this basically everything back here won't get touched. Anything else? Let's. Uh, I have one more question. Did, are you going to be able to preserve the stone wall that you show on the survey? The stone wall. Um, I think it's along this side here. In the front. There looks like there's some walls. Uh, yeah. We show them the stone walls, they're kind of rough, um, they're kind of busted up in places. Uh, I think trees have pulled out, knocked a couple of areas down, but 
for yeah, the most part. Like they're just kind of walking through it. Yeah, for the most part, they'll leave what they can. And you haven't done any tagging of particularly large trees in front. N no, not yet. This is there's an existing gravel driveway here right now. Um, so I don't think there would be much clearing for that part of it, but there will, obviously there will need to be some for the houses, depending on what the house looks like. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, open up the public. Any member of the public wish to comment? Again, this is on actually four items, items five, six, seven, and eight. Yep. <coughs> Mr. Horn. Uh, thanks. For the record, Bill Horn. Um, I thought I could speak a little bit to the three conditions that the land trust put on accepting it. Um, I think uh, Chairman Andrews uh, raised the question of contiguous open space, and, and as P, um, Jim said, there isn't any now, although there's a potential for it. On the other hand, uh, this is a uh, the wetlands on this property are headwaters for a, a large system that drains south. It, it's um, in, in Stony Creek. It's referred to as Squaw Brook, where it passes through Stony Creek. Um, and um, it was actually identified in a study by the Nature Conservancy as as being something that would have high value for protection. Uh, but we do need to have access to it, and that's that's why we asked to have a right to pass and repass, and we, we just thought it was uh, better to sort of have it apply to all the lots so that, you know, depending on conditions that arose over the years, we, we wouldn't be faced with a situation where we might have difficulty getting in. Um, the request that the 100-foot wetland upland review area be designated as, as a no disturbance zone, um, these lots drain fairly steeply down pretty much right to the edge of the wetland. Um, and the land trust is particularly sensitive to erosion of steep slopes uh, now given the problems that arose with the uh, development of the uh, 47 Gould Lane property. We're, we're still experiencing sedimentation into the wetland um, more than a year and a half after uh, the problem started. Um, a couple people even suggested that the uh, bond for the sediment and erosion controls might include money that could be used to remediate the wetlands if, if serious erosion occurred. Um, I didn't put that as a condition in the letter, but it was something that came up. So uh, we just want to make sure that, um, that uh, a, um, a homeowner doesn't get the idea of sort of trying to, to landscape and, and you know turn the whole slope almost all the way down to the wetlands into into something. We really need a hundred foot vegetated buffer on the wetlands in order to protect them. And that's why we're requesting that as a condition. Um, and so that's okay. all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Any other member of the public wish to comment? Seeing none. <coughs> oh, oh I'm sorry. Hi. Oh, I didn't see it. Good evening. My name is Jerry Murray. I live at 288 Leeds Island Road. I'm probably the one most impacted by this development. Um, if it complies the zoning requirements, I don't have an issue with it. <clears throat> the issue I have is, is groundwater and surface water is a concern of mine. Chris Dolan did a very nice presentation, but this is a 100-year-old granite quarry with shallow ledge almost everywhere. And the house that's on the western side of the property is above mine where the ledge pitches towards my backyard where my septic is. They're proposing to put that septic Which were on the uh, yes. Yeah. And I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, you grab a mic. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Grab a mic. There you go. So my, my house is right here. I have a concern with regards to this septic field. Um, because the water, the way the ledge is, everything pitches towards Leeds Island Road. So from, from the ridge back is irrelevant. But this spot right here, my septic is literally in this area. And it's the low point in the backyard. And there's a swale where the ledge was. If, if this septic goes here, I believe the perk holes are pretty shallow. I, I saw the results and I guess the deepest perk hole was 54 inches. 
it, was that was that on the western side property, or was, where was that? Can you come up and show me? And also, which way does the water shed? Because you were pointing, and I I didn't. Is it shed this way towards the street? So. Uh, there is a natural ridge here, basically where these houses are, and if Actually, you, the ridges. Right? you can see, see there's the high point here, see the, the, the uh, there's, those are the high points from the area, but in any event, um, uh, I believe on that lot, we had a restrictive layer of 50 inches here. Um, it, it varies from lot to lot. There's 52 on this lot um, to ledge. Honestly, my only concern is the separate and then I have a concern now. Where yeah, my, so, where my reserve is. so if you look at these contours, this basically kind of runs this way toward this low area over here. Yeah, um, uh, I have, I have been out there and I dug the soils that are there are actually. They weren't ter terrible soils, but they are shallow to ledge. Yeah. Um, these would be fill systems. Uh, I don't, I don't envision. No, they would probably be something newer than that. Um, there's a lot of newer type systems out now. Um, so what's the elevation change? Because you, you, only have, you only have two feet of undisturbed soil, is my understanding, of to a septic system. You've got to build on top. Four feet. So we may have an elevation change of another five or six feet. At that subject field, right? Yeah, and there, there would need, yeah. need to be a lot more testing when this lot okay, gets we may sold. Have elevation change of five to six feet, so that surface water is going to end up in my backyard. No, you wouldn't have an elevation change of five to six feet if the ledge is at fifty. Four, four feet. If the ledge is at four feet, let's say you only need to be four feet above the ledge, so we the bottom of the system. Up, up in this location, we do. Okay. Yeah, so. So All of these soil testing was basically done at the close to the toe of the slope on this side, um, which is where because up on the hill the ledge is very shallow. Agreed, um, but the reason why the soil testing was done in this area is because that's where the soil was the deepest. But we are changing the elevation of the septic system, right? Where that septic goes, it's got to go. You have to build off an existing two feet. But even so if the there is going to be an elevation change, correct? A couple of feet. It wouldn't be four or five feet. It wouldn't. And so what provision? Now, my, I want it for the record. My system was designed by Jim Portley, was approved by Dennis Johnson at East Shore Health, and put in by Fisher Estimate. When was that done? Uh, I maintained it. Every three years it gets pumped out. I don't have a uh, um, trash disposal, and I've never had a problem. This is my only concern. Myself and my reserve. I got an issue on the reserve. So that's my concern. So if there's a way that this field could be moved over to the other side, so I just want to make sure there's not surface water sure. issues and groundwater because a shallow ledge, every <coughs> swale is right, basically right under my septic system. And that's that's my concern. I want to give the house to either put the septic on the other side change the elevation so it's not it's not as high the, the, the septics can't be put on this side the health the wetland commission won't allow that um, that's why we have the houses where we do um, we did review this file the health department does have your system on file we did review it um, didn't appear to be um, any kind of a conflict with the system um, that's being proposed here um, but again each lot will need to go back to the health department so There'll be another review at that time. My reserve is actually on the edge of the property here. That's my reserve system. Sure. What do you use? Yes. Oh, sorry. Thank you. My reserve system is right, right in this area. Um, originally, you spoke with regards to an existing uh, road. That road went in in the last <coughs> 14 months, right. or 16 it's months. Gravel. It's a construction engine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But recently. Uh, prior, this, the area back in here was standing water. It was a collection area because it was a low point. There was actually a culvert that ran basically from the standing water that then transferred water down to the street and actually to a catch basin in front of my, in front of my mailbox. 
Uh, Jay Brown actually worked for the town a number of years ago, dug the trench that allowed the water that was standing back in here to get to the catch basin in front of my mailbox. My concern is now that that has been filled in and the culvert is now either removed or just buried, have we now changed the groundwater table and where does that surface water go that originally ended up in the catch basin in front of my mailbox? Because my reserve septic is right in this area. Okay. Did, I, you, did, you, did you guys go look at the project before any, any tree clearing was done or any excavation? Oh, I've been all over this property and... Um, before the work was done, though. Not before that, that stone driveway was put in. That was before we were hired. Okay. In fact, it was on the survey. Okay. Okay. Um, I think you, you've expressed your concerns. Rich, you've recommended, I believe, that we keep the public hearing open. We haven't heard from the fire marshal. It sounds like uh, we need, uh, there are some drainage questions. You need to speak with the town engineer. And also, I think it would be helpful. Maybe you, can, you, you two can speak uh, as well. So I, and I think it makes sense to keep the public hearing open for all four of them, because you can't, I think they're all a package. Uh, right, I just want to make everyone aware that uh, the 9th of January, the next meeting would be the 35th day. So just in case we've got a snowstorm, I mean, I don't think that's a fatal flaw, but technically right. in the statute. Right, they, they can grant an extension, right. So if you yeah. want to do that now to give us th yeah, through the next hearing, just in case there's no stuff. Yes, you can have okay. an extension. Two weeks, okay. okay. I'd, al I'd also like to say to, commit to the commission, I'm not adverse to this project. I'm not here to, to squash <clears throat> it. I just want to protect my property. I want to protect my septic and my reserve septic. That's it. Right, we, un we understand. Fair, Thank you. Certainly fair concerns. I, I think okay. it would be good to see the proposed grading along that common driveway so we can well, so I'll, I'll try to set up a meeting with the town engineer and the neighbor for yeah. the next meeting. That'd yeah. be great. And just before we close, uh, there are requirements in the regulations, uh, I think, in the site plan as well, in the subdivision regulations for drainage calculations. If that doesn't make sense in this particular case, I think there are three different storm events that are required to be calculated. Um, you could request um, some relief from that. And I think the commission probably look favorably on that, depending on what the town engineer says. So if you want to just do one event or whatever, it makes sense between the two of you in an engineering viewpoint. I'll talk to him about it. Basically yeah. For the driveways. Right, right. I mean, in this situation, is not a lot of, yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, thank you. What, was there anyone else from the public that wanted to comment on this, on this application? Yep. Uh, sure. Let's... Uh, Hi, I'm Ida Zulo, I'm 10 Tanglewood Drive. I'm here just to ask one simple question. When you guys start the blasting, will you be assuring that we're not gonna have any issues on our side on, at Tanglewood for um, you know, the foundations, the windows, anything, because we do have those issues that go on when, when you blast. Great. Because it's all ledge out there, and that's what I'm concerned about. What, are the, what, are, what will you be doing about that? Uh, I, I wasn't aware there were going to, is it going to be blasting? Uh, well, I would think you would have to blast because it's all ledge. Uh, right? <laughs> well, you know there's ledge out there. Yes. Yeah. Well, you could do a jackhammer the ledge. Well, whatever it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rock the other side. <coughs> Sure. Well, I just want to make sure that it doesn't. Well, I mean, typically if there is blasting, the commission's been putting a requirement approvals that uh, pre-blast survey is offered within a certain distance of a property boundary, for example, so that you have an opportunity to document what the condition of your property and your buildings are. And then there's also an offer for a post-blast survey. So that's been done in the past. Be considered. So when they get to that point, they'll let us know. They'll send out another notice to us. They'll send you a formal offer, the way we set it up previously for a pre-blast survey. It wouldn't require you to do it because they can't control whether you're going to accept it or not. But they would have to prove that they offered it to you, and if you did accept it, that they did it. Okay, as long as we're notified. Okay. okay. And you'd be notified anyway. I think according to the regulations of fire marshal enforcers, my understanding. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to comment on, the, on these applications? Okay, so 
then we will uh, continue this public hearing to our January 9th meeting. And did the applicant grant an extension? Uh, the applicant did grant an extension. If we needed it through the second meeting in January, which would be um, the 23rd, I think. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, so that then brings us, uh, everyone okay? We, okay. Brings us to item number nine, which is Nuzzo Properties, the special exception for the <coughs> non-agricultural farm events for 736 Main Street. See applicant uh, here, applicants and the representative here on that. Triple duty. <laughs> I should share it with you. You can uh, proceed. Yeah, it still works. Um, Jim Preddy, Chris Cole Engineering. I was asked by uh, the Nuzzos to update this site plan, kind of help this um, special exception application along. Um, we've gone out there and uh, I, I identified um, quite a bit of the landscaping that exists out there now. Um, just kind of coming in from the, the driveway. There's um, arborvitae actually on both sides of the driveway here. There's a couple of large, very large pine trees in the island here. Arborvitae is all down the side. There's very mature tree line. This is all very wooded back here. Um, there's a number of individual trees on the property, some tall pines here. Again, um, arborvitae is down the property line here, separating the existing parking lot from the current animal pen area. Um, and then there's various little landscaping around the buildings. Um, what we're here for as part of this uh, non-agricultural farm event thing is um, location of um, the tent facilities, porta potty <coughs> etc. Um, what we've noted on the plan here in these two orange areas are possible um, tent locations that actually meet the setback requirements um, for uh, the, the regulation that was adopted. Um, uh, the, behind this existing shed would be the location for porta potties there. There are um, bathroom facilities in the building there. Um, these two locations um, for different reasons, but uh, this location, they're, they're looking to move the animal pen over to here anyway. This location has a nice view of the existing pond and also down the valley to, toward North Brantford, so this is kind of a nice spot. Um, so the plan has been updated to kind of show what, what's existing out there for landscaping requirements. Uh, we did receive this, uh, well, late last night, I guess, um, staff report um, indicating, uh, well, a number of things. Uh, a couple of things I'm unclear about, but um, I don't know if it makes sense for you to go over it first or just ask questions. But Probably, yeah. Um, do you want to go over it, Harry? Or? I'm willing to do that, but you tell that, me when you'd fine. like me to do it. Yeah. Would, would it be... Are you at the point of reviewing the comments in the staff report? I'll just have It may them. make sense to kind of go down these one at a time. Just sure. I'll look again now. There's no plan. Uh, I don't know. If Do we have no, copies of the staff report? Just here? go. any other plants in this? Sorry? We don't have that plan anywhere. It's just a little hard to see. Oh, uh, no, I don't. So we can bring it closer. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Harry, do you want to just run through it and then? Sure. I mean, this is a, what I had to do was evaluate this under the farm event, the non-agricultural farm event regulations that were just adopted, um, the special exception criteria, and the uh, standards for site plans. Um, so it's fairly lengthy. Um, what I was planning on doing was just basically hitting the, the major points. If there's questions about some other minor things, I can add that if the applicant wants to bring that up. But 
the first comment I had about the properties involved, if you look at the town's um, records, there are two properties that are within the boundary shown on the plan. One is 736 East Main Street, and then there's a zero East Main Street, which is a rear property. Um, so they're shown here with no indication of a boundary between the two of them. I'm unclear whether they've merged or not, or what the status is, because the application itself just says 736, which is a much smaller piece of property than what's shown here. Jim, do you want to address these as we kind of go through them? Rather than yeah, to my knowledge, they were not merged, um, but they were always together. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, part of it's a technicality, but it's um, the other part of it is there's more of this property that continues to the left, if you will, looking at the plan, um, or to the west, and it comes up to the end of Baldwin Drive. And there is a driveway that's been created um, from Baldwin Drive that wraps into North Branford and back up into this property, all on property owned by the applicants. But some of it's in Branford and some's not. That's correct. There is okay. a um, there is a gravel access drive from Baldwin. Yeah. Um, that kind of moves into my next comment is in terms of management of traffic and the provision of emergency services, my understanding at least is that the main driveway um, right up from East Main Street there would be the main access. However, the gravel driveway that comes up to Baldwin Drive would also be access, at least for yes, no. My understanding is that other driveway off Baldwin Street was approved at a, um, a different application a couple of years ago. That's right. Um, and, and that would just be used for emergency access. Okay, that wasn't clear from the material, so that was a question. Uh, um, in regards to the event, it would be used for it. Okay, um, so I just want to note that part of that driveway goes to North Branford, which is land that the commission has no authority over whatsoever, so there probably needs to be something um, guaranteeing that that would be uh, available for the provision of emergency service, emergency service personnel to go traverse that gravel driveway. If they need to, let's say that main driveway is blocked for some reason, they need to get in the property. Okay, so, so the issue, okay. Yeah, there's no control the commission has over the part of the property in North Brantford. Okay. Um, so it's just a question I had how to do that. And we, um, which also moves into the police and fire. Um, I think there was something verbal told me that they've looked at the application, but we never did get any written mm -hmm. documentation that they're okay with it. So I need that. So. Okay. Okay. My um, understanding is the letters from the fire and the police department were in the application. I did not see them. That's what I'm being told, anyway. You have them, but I, I don't know. If were they separate from the application materials? Nope, they were in with the application materials. Here's two different, a copy of there. Okay, There's thank you, but I didn't see that. Yeah, it was in our application. Okay. And they both have no issues. They both said everything's fine, and they approved it. And that was based on being able to access uh, Baldwin Drive, from Baldwin Drive no, into the site? It was the main it was the road right away. Okay, yeah. if that's not an issue, that's not an issue. It had nothing to do with the back. We were in the back, we were only dealing with the front. Okay. I did speak with um, Carrie Duquez, the planner from North Brantford. She called me. Um, she asked about that one little structure that was a stage, and I did tell her that that is planned to be removed. Um, she said as long as there wasn't anything being built on their side, the, the existing farm roads were incidental to, to them. They don't really need to go to their commission. But unless they start proposing activity on that side, that's outside of the farm. Um, yeah, that's oh, fine. I mean, the stage is shown on the plan, so it needs to be indicated it's to be removed if that's what's going to correct. be done. So that removes that question. Because if you look at it, the, sort of the area in front of it is half in town and half in Brand uh, North Brantford. Right. It's not their intention to include the stage part of the event site, though. Yeah. It's not going to be, it's going to be the assembled. Yeah. Let's get removed, um, that whole field is getting planted. Okay, yeah, it just needs to be indicated in the plan is that sh that stage is going away. Yeah, it's gone. 
And one of the requirements of the regulations was to identify the area on the property that would be where the event's taking place, so there's no boundary as to where this is happening and where it's not happening. Um, so that needs to be added, and that was one reason why I didn't know whether it's extending to North Brantford or not. Based on the presence of the stage, it looked like it was. Yeah, that, that theory where the stage has nothing to do with whatever happened in the events. That's no, that's fine. I just need to show it on the plan so it's clear. That's why it was, and they built the town. All our friends, we all came and we built it. So that was, was basically it was a dedication to that. And that was it. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It just needs to be clear in the plan, so yeah, it's, it's clear what's being approved. That's all. Um, one thing that um, I brought up, I think, a while ago, probably when we were talking about the regulation um, amendment, was the uh, presence, at least on town uh, information, of wetlands in the property. Uh, we do have something in the application from a wetland soil scientist saying there are no longer any wetlands present on the property outside of the... Uh, the pond. Um, there is, however, I was just informed late this afternoon, a delineation from 2012 showing um, the pond is being part wetland and wetland sort of extending into where the parking area is. I'll go up and show you where that is. But. I'll pass this around and show us the applicant also. Um, but the 2012 delineation, excuse me. You can move it back so they can see it maybe, or, or um, well, yeah. a little bit. Well, just, I, I got a piece of paper, I'll just show you. Okay. But, like this. It extends basically from the pond here. So some of these parking spaces in an area that looks to be formally wetland. It's unclear how, when, what happened to it. Um, so I think that is... Um, is the pond a water course? I mean, does the pond no, count? No, it's an artesian well. And we already addressed this four years ago with Diana Ross, and then I did have a meeting with Mr. Cosgrove. And, here Cosgrove. Here too, and it was all fine. This was addressed four years ago. The factory behind the farm was had a pond, and they were running pipes. The farmer was pissed off, and it was a big fight okay. over the factory. And then they filled it in. The factory filled in. The, the factory filled in one of the ponds behind the wire. That okay. you guys approved Here's for the building. But and they put for, all infiltrators into the ground. Okay. And for the pond, it's an artesian well. Okay, I, I think that the only thing we need is a wetland sign off that they're fine with it. Exactly, it's just a question, and yeah. it's not for us to decide it's for wetlands, so. And we have, we have so soil sign. I did Jim. speak with your um, wetland staff agent this morning about this after I um, was made aware of the same issue and he said whether or not there were wetlands there or not wetlands there is actually a debate for another day um, as with regards to the event um, approval that we're looking for the tents and the porta potty locations that that's not a wetland issue for them because we're not actually building any permanent structures I, th I think I that's my understanding as well with the only exception being a the ditch, whatever you want to call it, wetland area that extends into the parking area, that there's no potential loss of parking spaces due to some requirement to do something about that wetland. So I think that's just a question at the moment. I grew up on that property for 20 years, and the farmer was having fights with everybody on Baldwin Drive for dumping water on his property, running their pipes. It was a huge fight. And then he was actually suing the building on the end. Mm. And he went after that building. Then they put all infiltrators. And Corey Pavin did them all after they filled in the big holding pot. At Accurate Wire? At Accurate Wire. I got pictures. OK. Um, um, you know, well, that, that's all fine. It's just a question of, is there jurisdiction? Is there need to be a, yeah. Right. We just need the official. Wait. I just okay. leave that there. Right. Um, next. <laughs> next is parking. Um, the plan shows um, spaces. I'll go back up and point them out so everyone you can all see what I'm talking about. Which one's on? Is this one on? Uh, they're both. Yeah, that's on. This one? Oops. This one? Okay. So the main parking area is proposed between the cafe and the house as you go in the property. You sort of veer to the left, you go between the two buildings and there's an existing gravel parking area. Um, 
that has been laid out in paper here, though there's no striping or no spaces delineated yet, but it's shown in a way that conforms to the parking requirements with the exception of these four spaces here adjacent to the house. There isn't the 24 foot maneuvering area that's required by the zoning regulations behind them. So those don't really, can't count as a approvable spaces. So um, there was also, I'm just gonna jump since I'm here to the landscaping requirement in the parking area. There are already, I believe, five trees here. You can see here. Uh, if you count up the spaces, it's over 60, so you need seven trees. You could put a tree here and a tree here, for example, and make it conforming with the landscaping requirements also. So um, you also have a question here. There's an overflow parking proposed along this 10-foot gravel drive that sort of extends from the this main graveled area here. Um, that gravel drive is only 10 feet wide and needs to be 24 feet according to the regulations for the parking spaces to be in conformance. So at the moment, those really can't be counted as spaces in conformance with the zoning regs. You've got the 12 here, you've got the whatever number is here. I think it boils down to 75 spaces once you've deducted the, the overflow here and the four there. Mr. Pratt, did you understand that comment about the space needed for the parking in order for them to be conforming parking spaces? Yeah, um, you know, originally the, the plan was to just to have um, parking on the lawn area up there um, because it's just, there's only so many a year. Um, right. The gravel jive existed, so we showed, depicted the parking spaces, which the boxes that we depict are 9 by 20, they're standards spaces, but we show them um, along that drive just as a um, an organizational kind of tool um, so that the drive gets used more than it doesn't. Um, but the truth of the matter is that it's all really flat through there and they could, whether you drive on the grass or not drive on the grass, um, it's not like the, the gravel road is incised or anything like that. It's just um, the, the intent was to keep the majority of the traffic on that path. Um, but the grass will be used for parking anyway. So. But can you get all, you still need this parking space in the rear, right? Can you move them up? Behind the building is where we have all the parking. Okay. This was the uh, parking plan that Harry said there was no lines. Right now there's not. But here's all the lines from all the events that we have. And uh, I do all the striping for the town of Branford, so I know all the logistics on what to do. I mean, you guys can pass them around and look. That's, sure. uh, that was before the that bench stopped. They made us do it. Yeah, they the, the, the fire department yep, made those really stripes huh? and everything on the ground. I, I, my understanding, it, it fits in is, I think the parking <coughs> spaces determine your capacity. Yeah. They so, do. So, so I, I think you got to show parking spaces that conform. Those are all conformance. Yeah, that, I think the, the Harry's point was that. Oh, oh, for, and the, in the. Yeah, the, so you're probably going to lose some parking spaces in the back. But you could also could you do one way parking around one lane and have it one way flow and then you don't need the full width. You could do that. You have to angle them. Yeah. So there's ways to adjust it. I mean. Maybe go parallel so, no. I mean, I don't know in, in any event, we can reorganize the parking right. in that grass area. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a trade off. You make the maneuvering aisle wider, then you have less area may, at the event. It may mean losing you know, a few spots. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm just reacting to the plan I've got. The event's not happening behind that red building. That's really parking. So I would just maximize that to see what you can maximize it to be. Yep. Okay. Well, yes. that brings up Marcy. That brings up a good point. I mean, is because this is a temporary event, and depending on which tent is used or uh, the size of the event, it may not get used every time. Is grass parking acceptable in temporary situations, or does it have to be gravel? Well, and it's a question of. I think we've been struggling with this since it was first proposed. Is how far do you go in improving the site, and what's the reasonable balance between? allowing the business to go ahead and we want you guys to succeed and I might have wrote this huge staff report but it's not that I'm against the project 
It's just I got to do my job and evaluate according to regulations. So I've done that. Um, but there's a judgment call here between how the, the, the level of improvement required to the property to allow this use to go ahead based on what it now can be based on the new regulations. So is it temporary? Is it periodic? Yes, but right now you could have 20 events and they can range throughout the, the warm season or even beyond for that little building. And um, you'd have up to, you know, somewhere between 150 and whatever number of parking spaces you can add onto here, 200 something people going in and out of here. So w what do you require? I mean, I should it be just dirt? I well, mean, I probably not. That's probably of, not going to work. I can't help but think of Yale football games <laughs> yeah, and right. the tennis tournament when we're, when we're talking about, you know, you have an event, you have people yep. park them, you, they do the, you know, enough aisle width to park it. You know, it might be oriented one way for one type of event or another, depending on what's going on. I guess my question would be, are there going to be two tents where you're only, you're, so only that's, one at a time. yeah, so, you know, to me, I would show almost two plans, you know, one tent location with maximum parking, one with the other tent location with maximum parking, and then. That's a good idea, yeah. You know, and now you've got, because I think that that's what this should be, is providing flexibility. It's there. I mean, on our non-agricultural last week, we had 90 cars in and out all day with selling trees. I mean, and it's not like we haven't been doing this. We, yeah, we did we, the we've been doing for event for you know, five years. We just packed, came to you worked. guys to be able to do more. We wanted to do it legally, which technically, sometimes I kick myself in the head. I should have just stayed at the four, and you didn't even know I was if I was doing 30. But because we're successful business owners, we wanted to do everything above board. But it seems to be very frustrating and aggravating. Every time I turn, there's a different twist and a different upset. Well, we're getting there. What's the next We're getting one? there. We're working let's, through let's, it. Let's, um, let's get through this here. I did go out to look at the property um, before Thanksgiving, and there's some evidence of erosion. I think the, um, the existing gravel drives are pretty well maintained. Maybe, Tony, you've got some equipment. You go out there if it needs to be repaired to fix it. I can understand that. Um, and I really perhaps want the town engineer to, to look at it and see what his opinion is, whether you need some ditches and, and culverts or it's acceptable the way it's laid out. Um, there's probably been some fill, I would think, over the years done. you own it, so regrading a little bit. but. I just saw some evidence of that, and I think it needs to be addressed somehow. Where's the uh, That's in North Brantford, though. Some of it was going down the driveway once you're in North Brantford. Yeah. Some of it was off Baldwin Drive. Uh, there's a little bit in front of the, um, so in the, the shed the in the middle. North parcel? I'll show you. The, the areas were addressed and repaired a few days after you came for the inspection. No, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying usually this sort of provision for preventing the erosion in the first place. I mean, I well, think you maintain the property, keeping it no, out, I know. I obviously. I didn't get to fix it yet because I was actually, right. we ended up getting a couple other animals and we were doing work in the field with the new barns. So it, it's, it's hard with the big equipment. It makes, it makes tracks in it. Yeah, I, 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 you, 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 I can see the evidence on the ground yeah. where you've done no, that, sure. absolutely. But there's a little bit of an area here and some of this actually follows where, you know, there used to be maybe some water going through the property. Um, it's not major, it's just something to address. I mean, all these items individually, I don't think are major. It's just collectively they sort of need to be addressed. Harry, Harry if, I can, um, if I can get the town engineer to walk the site with me and address anything he may find, would that kind of satisfy that? I issue? think that would be very helpful to have someone from an engineering perspective look at it. Doesn't need a culvert, doesn't need a ditch, or doesn't it? Okay. Um, next topic I've got is lights. Um, there are several lights along the driveway coming in from East Main Street. I mean, those are all full cutoffs. They're fine. They were approved by the department years ago. Um, right. In the parking lot, the main one between the uh, house and the cafe, uh, there's one non-conforming light mounted on the house that needs to be changed and be conforming. If the commission wants to require that, which I think the regulations ask you to. There are also a uh, proposal to use temporary lighting. And um, there's no information in the application about how many temporary lights would be used. Um, it's a pretty significant level of light. Um, it is not gonna be conforming, but again, it's temporary, it's not permanent. 
Um, I'm just throwing out there as a question. Um, when you look at the spec, it, these lights are going to generate um, 450,000 lumens. So just put that in perspective. Um, your 100 watt incandescent light bulb throws out about 1,000 lumens, roughly. So you're talking about 400, 100 watt light bulbs. So this is these lights are intended to illuminate acres, and that says it right in the specifications. So I don't know what kind of situation depends where the how many, where they're aimed, who's around it. Could be no problem, could be a potential problem. So well, I'm sort of throwing that out there. If I can comment, they probably only need one of those for that grass parking field. Um, there are only industrial buildings all around in the wooded area around, so I don't think there's anybody being disturbed. Um, to be clear, though, these are the same type of lights that the rental companies um, rent um, yep. for this type of thing, that the town uses on the green for events, that the big field behind the community center has um, up most of the year. Um, not any different than those. And there's houses all around that field. It's the same vendor. I, I bought two of them from the town. Bought their and the same model. The same model. model. Because originally when we had bed stock, they let us they let us borrow, borrow two, two of them. them. And, and so then we went out and, we went out and they donated them for that. Yeah. The event. And they were they're not being I mean, during the, like if you have a <coughs> turning these things on. Like you said, they'll blind you. They're only for when people are leaving, basically. That's good to know, and that would be helpful if that's sort of added, you know, documented yeah. in the application. Yeah, they're not. That'd really be very helpful. On. I mean, probably this Saturday I had them on for the Christmas trees because the people were picking out trees, and they want to see, you know, how they are. So. Like Has anyone ever... Complained or no. talk or nobody. No, and I had them on. I had them on Friday night, and Saturday night. They're okay. Around too so we're there's, the only neighbors. so there might be bright, but there's some question about whether they're leaving. The light is leaving the site as far as light. Yeah, that was my concern. Yeah. Okay. What's uh What's next? Next, uh, the hours. And I'm just sort of noting this. Um, uh, seven through eleven, Monday through Saturday. Nine through eleven on Sunday. Um, Hours for amplified sound or music, 7 a.m. to 9 to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and 9 to 10 on Sunday. I did have a question about whether those hours include setup and breakdown. So is that going to occur outside of the hours, or that's going to be within the hours? You. It, it's not going to include setup and breakdown. So it's going to be after or before. It may be. Well, obviously, that's breakdown is going to be after an event. So right. Be before, but you, you know, a an event can vary. If you're going to have a wedding, some people want. I completely to understand. Be Right, I completely understand. So this is the maximum. But, this is but a, it's not going to include any amplified sound or any, you know, any disruption yeah. during the <coughs> or breakdown. Anything. Well, I guess that's not clear from what I got out of this was 7 through 11, and now you're saying after 11 there'll be breakdown potentially for the maximum largest event you might consider having. Well, when they all leave, it'll be probably me breaking it down, but it probably won't be. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you have here, you know, musical events, so the potential exists. The way it's portrayed in the application to have a concert out there and to have people wanting to take their equipment out after 11 o'clock. I'm just. Isn't that kind of standard, like the brewery? You know, you've got the, the noise ordinance, it closes, but the brewery still. Locking up and doing whatever they do. Uh, there were a lot of complaints about the large events. You, I'm, I'm sorry, summer. you guys should be using a mic back there because uh, we can't get it for the. Uh, yeah. Come on up when you speak. Okay. But it's so. no different than like when Bramford has their fairs on the town green and they're setting up, you know, days in advance. And then breaking down the next day. I mean, it takes time to do that. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. It's they, okay. I'm but just asking but the questions. it's not to disrupt anybody okay. during that what, time. What's, no what's next? There's no one to disrupt anyway because the okay. events are not near. Uh, the next thing the I've residents. got is landscaping. Um, and the new plan is very helpful. So it shows that most of the site property lines have got row of landscaping, arborvitae, I believe, most of the plant things. Um, the property line to the southeast between the property subject to the application and 
There's another adjacent property owned by the applicants. Has no landscaping. I just note that. Um, there is a way to. So they're putting trees, I thought. I don't think so. Up there? No, down, down. Well, there's. Yeah, that's not working. Here. Oh. There's a six foot fence there now. Need a mic. This Mike. is Mike. their property. Oh, it is their property. <laughs> um, Again, I'm just noting, you know, lack of compliance. I mean, there is a way to, as we discussed in prior applications, for a waiver to be requested, it's owned by in common. But I think just going through the steps of following the regulations would be the way to go about it. Um, <coughs> are there going to be dumpsters in this? And there's a the nod. Yes, we will. And there's no spot I saw on the plan where they're going to be located. So that really should be addressed. Typically, enclosures are. Yeah, I have dumpsters. And ABC So the property that's not part of the application will have the dumpsters to serve the application. And it, they could be shifted. <coughs> well, we yeah, we can pick a spot. That's simple. Yeah. I mean, okay. There's. I mean, just need to follow it up thing. and. Yeah. Typically, is a the concrete pad. There's the dumper itself, and then there's the enclosure. It's a farm. So Farms Not, have garbage too. <laughs> yes, I know, but so. concrete patch change and everything. I mean, okay. Uh, there's a reason for all this, and I'm just, just going to keep going. Um, drainage. Um, I did have a preliminary discussion before the application was filed with the town engineer, and that's noted in the application um, package. Um, the comment I got back was that the site sort of naturally drains down to the the pond, if you will, and then down the hill into North Branford. Um, the regulations, however, do require some calculations. If it's not felt that it's needed to have those calculations, uh, that and uh, there's many, many other items that are required for the site plan that maybe aren't necessary for this application, but they should need to be noted in a request so the commission can consider waiving those requirements, which is provided for in the regulations too. Right. Okay, and, and, and I, I, I think the drainage issues could be addressed at the same time if I can get well, the, the town engineer to meet us out there. Right. Yeah, I mean, just like the last application, there are a series of you need to do calculations according to the regulations for different storm events, and that may not be necessary here, but if you feel it isn't necessary, you need to put that in writing to the commission, and the regulations ask you to say why it isn't needed, and the commission needs to approve the, the waivers. Right. Well, the, drain, the drainage, sorry, has been... This has been, this farm is not new to Branford. This is an existing Christmas tree farm that does probably 90 cars on a Friday and Saturday. We, I mean, it's a busy place, in and out. You know, I'm always fixing the roadways, the, the traffic, you know, coming in and out, putting stone all, I mean, we right. just got a bill, she yeah. just, uh, $3,000, I, I, I just got a bill last right. week. She died. We, we think and understand that. And Mr. Preddy said he's going to suggest the town engineer walk it with right. him. And, and, and so I think we're, we've we're got that covered. What's and, in it? And uh, to, Harry's point, on. Uh, to Harry's point, anything I, that, that we don't feel applies, we'll actually put right. in the and list. Right, and then just say, we, okay. and say why. Right, yeah. so I think he, he's so checking We can out. take care of that. If I can just interject, though, I think Harry already had a, a thorough discussion with the town engineer, and it's documented in an email. I just haven't had a chance to pull the email and present it. But, okay. But, but it I, was already clear between the two of them. There was a discussion prior point. to the application, and basically it was, is this really going to create a major problem in his viewpoint? He thought no, but now that we're actually in the, the nitty-gritty of doing the site plan review and so forth, there's procedural steps that need to be followed to document all that. So they just need to be followed. What else? Uh, the only comment I've got is that there are I don't think it's necessarily a problem, but there's a hundred different event types listed, and the commission may want to take a look at that. They're on a separate Schedule A attached to, I believe, the uh, general operations plan. Do uh, we have a copy of that? You do in the application package. It's not attached to this, but okay. So maybe you can. I'll get make it. sure you get that. We can get that. So those are the major points, and there's a lot of other detailed items I don't think I need to go into right now, but if there's any other questions about that, I'd be happy to talk to you okay. during the hearing or offline about it. Okay. 
Um, wh where I think we're going with this is, uh, I think it sounds, Ms. Pretty had some good suggestions, walking the site with the Tangineer, getting the things, requesting waivers and so forth, getting this cleaned up. So I think we're, we're going to like to continue this as a public hearing to our next regular yeah. scheduled meeting. It, it, it sounds like some of the things we have addressed or can address and some of the things maybe don't apply. Correct. And so I think what we'll do before the next meeting is generate a document, basically, and not, not in opposition, but it, um, <laughs> a mirror to this, each item, and just whether it's addressed or not, or how it's addressed. And sure. Just make it simple. That'd be great. That'd be very helpful. Do you want to say the public wants to? Yeah, well. So, so it looks like we're going to continue this, but in the meantime, does any member of the public wish to comment at this time, even though we're likely to continue this? Jamie Cosgrove yeah, first. Mr. Cosgrove. I just think it's important to probably make a couple comments as I was involved in the very beginnings in facilitating uh, this, um, I guess, the it was a, you know, amendment, uh, the zoning rag amendment, working with Harry and uh, the applicants prior when they were deciding. And I know it was a long process and everyone's uh, heard over what the, the intent was really to have events that were um, you know, so they can supplement uh, to maintain the farm. And I think the one thing that I heard, and kind of, I think I heard it from the applicants, I heard it from Harry, and I, I also will reference a previous application, which I think supports the fact. I think what we don't want to lose is that <clears throat> the reason why the town, in my understanding, is that adopted this regulation uh, was really to maintain the farm. And I just caution if we start to add certain things and requirements that it then becomes commercialized in the aspect of, you know, the setting when you're there. I mean, there's certain things. We've all been to many, uh, I'm sure, uh, farm areas that have <coughs> activities and events. And the, the attraction is that it is still a farm. You're going to a farm for this event. You drive over grass to get to it. You park on grass, things of that nature. There's not, you know, uh, concrete light stanchions and 15-foot poles. And I think just to, you know, kind of, this is really just to give the uh, permission to have up to, I think it was 20 events. And I recall when this commission was considering the farmer's market out on Alps Road, and there was discussion whether, because and again, I know um, Harry's comments are really just looking at the regulations and saying, does this apply or not for this activity? And at that time, there was discussion whether or not a sidewalk should be uh, installed all along the uh, right. Alps Road. And I think you know, one of the commission members uh, stated, you know, you're really talking about an event. And does the event that we're giving permission to occur on this property, not the overall use, require that regulation to be met, to <coughs> for our sidewalk to be put in there? And I think the commission then decided that it wasn't uh, a condition of approval to hold that event on that property. I, I, that was my recollection. So I guess I just thought it was important to come up when we're considering things. The intent is really to try to preserve farmland, and not only this farm, but the, you know, this applies to other potential farmland in Brantford, and uh, give uh, the owners of it an opportunity to kind of supplement the carrying cost of uh, maintaining that farm. So I just want to make that. Right. Thank you. Any, anyone else uh, yes. wish to comment? Yes, ma'am. Hi, you've seen my face before. <laughs> I'm Susan Nezzo, uh, Audra and Tony's sister-in-law. And um, I just want to mention a few things, if you don't mind. Um, the accessory use of Nuzzo Farm is it, not new to the property. You all know that. In fact, the farm has been in existence since 1873. That's like 146 years. And they've been hosting farm events, non-farm events, for a very long time prior to the Nuzzos even owning it. Um, since they obtained ownership of the farm, they worked with the town to, to establish the guidelines for accessory use for farms for, for non-agricultural events. Um, the regulations that were adopted 
from for section 718 b6 permit a total of 29 agricultural <laughs> events per calendar year <coughs> back in October of 2018 while the regulations were being finalized the town allotted the Nuzzo farm for uh, actually allotted them eight Somewhere in the translation of things, it got knocked down to four, and we don't know why or how. Um, there's been no explanation on that. But there were a lot of the four based on that site plan. Nothing new, nothing different, based on that. Um, and obviously created by a professional engineer, Jim Preeti. The regulations weren't finalized until September of this year, so it's a whole year has gone by. They're trying to maintain the farm, sustain it, feed the animals. They're selling eggs, doing some events, doing what they can to keep it afloat while running AB sealers, sinking all of their funds into this farm, while this is you know, taking a whole year to develop the regulations. And now that the regulations have been developed, you know, they submitted the application in October of this year um, just to increase what already exists. So we're not asking for anything new, we're just asking for the number to be increased based on the plan that was submitted that was already approved. So, you know, it's very frustrating for them to keep coming back and forth, frustrating for the whole family and friends, everybody that's been putting so much effort into this farm to keep it afloat, to keep people coming down, to see the animals, to, to buy Christmas trees, to buy crafts, things that we do and that they've done to rebuild this farm. It was dilapidated before they took it over. I mean, it was in shambles. The pipes, the things they had to do to, the, the excavation was incredible. I'm just, you know, trying to understand if they help establish these regulations, why aren't they allotted the 20 that were in this whole big process <coughs> that they went to through just to get the regulations updated? And they're only allotted the four. When they should have been allotted eight, and technically they should have been allotted 20 a year ago. Um, so, you know, it's not, again, what they're asking for is not anything new. It's just let's increase the amount to the regulation amount of 20. Um, as you can see, there's no lawyer present tonight uh, to represent the farm. The entire process has amounted to over 18,500 in legal fees since we introduced the attorney that we kept bringing. That's insane. Just to get an additional 16 events of something they're already doing based on a plan you already approved. Um, that doesn't even include engineering costs, soil engineer inspection report, recommended wetland reviews, alterations to the property to include visual screens, additional plantings, lighting, parking, and many, many more costs that are not even listed, listed here. The entire process has created a hardship for the stabi stability of the farm and the Nuzzo's farm desperately needs the non-agricultural events to offset the costs associated with maintaining and sustaining the farm sustaining, you know, natural resources. I mean, we're talking about a farm that's been there for almost 150 years. It's, it's a historic landmark in this town. <coughs> All of the farm and non-agricultural -agric events held today have been successful with no issues from the town, the police, nor surrounding residents or commercial businesses. The farm is this historic landmark that's valuable, it's a valuable asset to the town and the community. And we're just trying to make it even better than what it was. Um, our intents are consistent with the plan of conservation and development and farms across Connecticut hold the same types of farm and non-agricultural events that Nuzzo's farm has requested. We have gone above and beyond to be in compliance with the regulations, just like Audra said, she came to you. She didn't go behind anybody's back. 
didn't try to break the law. She's trying to do the right thing, coming forward with, here's what we have. And uh, this is costing them an um, enormous amount of their retirement savings, to be quite honest. Um, I'd hate to see them have to put condos up because this is taking so long to get passed. I'd hate to see low-income housing go in that area because this is taking so long to be passed. They need to be able to stay um, competitive with the surrounding businesses, surrounding areas, other farms like Van Wilgen, like Rose's Orchard. They have to stay competitive. And the longer this gets delayed, the harder it's going to be for them to even have these things happen. It's going to be harder for them to continue to pay for the farm and keep it a natural resource. And they don't want to be forced to demolition the whole thing and sell out to, you know, a condo association or the state for low income housing. I mean, those things can happen and we'd hate to see that happen. We need your approval and the faster the better. Okay. It's, it, it, it's created a serious hardship financially. Okay. Th thank you. Um, are there any, I, I, we would have I'll been make, more I'll, prepared by the way, had uh, we gotten that report sooner. Right. Um, I, I, I will say, Harry has said that there's, there's nothing in this report that can't be addressed. Guys, you're on the five yard line. Okay. Uh, you're, you're almost there. You, you've got a good professional. He's going to walk it with the engineer. You're going to get the check off from wetlands. You're going to make the list. You're gonna, so Harry's doing his job and everyone, we're almost there. So I understand what's going on. I understand what First Lockman said. I hear everyone. Everyone's doing their, their job and, we're, and I think we'll get it done. We'll get it done right. So does anyone else from the public wish to comment at this time? Thank you. Yes. And, and, and what we are, we our care. plan is to... Uh, we care. Right, I understand. Chuck, if these are minimal, why can't we condition these like we do everything well, else? Well, because we still got to walk the site with the engineer. There's still some things that are going to be done that, that I think need to be done. We still need, I think, a piece of paper from Wetlands saying that, that it's okay. I think we need to get the, get the stuff documented but and, and, and to do it. Oh, okay. That... Maybe I, maybe we don't need wetlands. We, we need mean, the engineering stuff. We got your your professional that's there, and he, he's going. You're going. We're going to get it done. Is there anything that you can cross off the list tonight to approve? I I think Harry from, from the, that list. We, we've got you've gotten this. And we we understand you. You just got it recently. Under, understand that there's been a lot of Rich has been sick. Or there's been that we've had some issues of uh, whatever. So we have the list. We're trying to get advertisements in the paper to recover the money that we want. We want to try and start you both. push. You push. I mean, somebody else just asked for something to get pushed through, and Harry's like, "Oh, I'll help you in two weeks, and we'll get the parking We've been earlier tonight." We've been on since 2018 with this. It, it's, it's and now it, it's time. It, it's time. It, I I don't. Do, do, do you have events scheduled between now and January 9th? No, but we got to advertise. Okay. You think I want to dump 20 grand in advertisement to get... To not to then say we can't have the I event. Mean, you guys, nobody's really thinking. But also to book and receive the I'm sorry. It's, it's, just, it's to the point that where... That we might not be able to have. Yeah. So we're we're, to the we're point on where a standstill. It's grow. like staying. And everybody's like, oh, let's wait another month. Let's wait another month. Push me off another year. Come on. Okay, I all I can say is I've heard what you I, I've heard what you said. And we can do all those regulations over because everything it's not going to be done. But, and, and the point and, and the point okay, is they're guys, already um, doing what I, I what was approved. Right. Do you know the taxes I pay in this town? Seriously. Okay. For how long? And you guys are pushing me off. Uh. All the time. Uh, there, is is there anything that can be? I, I don't think there's a major item. Last minute. Well, so. uh, well, well, uh, excuse me, sir. We're 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 gonna. Well, I, let let's talk among ourselves for a little bit at this uh, public hearing. What, John or what do you guys? Uh, who is? Uh, uh, regulations. Uh, what? You should follow the regulations. Yeah. Because later on, it's gonna bite us in the butt. We don't do it. Yeah. That's the problem. It's a slow process. 
but but it, it's got to be done. It's not it's not the delay isn't specifically about th these people. Because I think we all agree we want to see this happen, but because they want it to happen sooner than it, it it's going to happen, that's not our fault. We still have rules and regulations. A uh, lady said that. Um, the farm been around for 157 years. There were no regulations 150 years ago. They could have done anything they wanted. I understand. And, and so what I'm saying is that the, the, we're bound by regulations, not from the town, but from the state, from from handy, you know, uh, ADA stuff. We're we're bound as well. So we can't just push it through and then later on, you know, let's figure it out at the end. If something happens on your farm and there's an event and there's something we did not do that we're supposed to do. We're all liable for that. No, and I understand. What I'm asking at this point in the evening, is there anything that we've gone through in this list tonight from the staff comments that can be checked off the list? I, I think some of them were. Some of them were. I, so, uh, some of them, the, the, some the of them were. The use of well, we already were granted to do eight, which somehow got changed to four. So we're already doing what we're asking to do. So and the, for our site, you're not someone else's site. You're approving just giving us 16 more. We're already doing four. So we're not asking to do something that we're not already doing. Yes, you are. You, it, it, from going four to 16, it's not the same thing. You, you increase your liability for everybody. You know what I'm saying? If you had a single event, like the first selectman said, that's a single event that happens and disappears. Uh, I agree with the, the uh, things that happen on the green. They happen, they set up tents three days in advance to do the book sale. Then the tents come down. I agree with that. I think you're absolutely right on that point. But I think there are, there are when you, and if you had a single event, you'd been out here a long time ago. You had four events, it's probably why you got out faster than you may not. When you go up to 16 or 18. It's, it's or 20. 20. <laughs> it starts to change the, it changes the, the venue. We have many non-agricultural events. We are with, I mean, our agricultural events. We have that many. We have more than 16 agricultural events. We sell apples. We have people there every day doing it. But that's what we the farm is there to exactly. do. Exactly. So we're already doing that. There's. It doesn't differ much is what she's saying. For I, I, I understand. But we, we've gone through the regulation process for non-agricultural farm events. Guys, I... You know, I think we are. We have checked. This has been invaluable. As much as the frustration is evident, I get that. But we have checked off the things. You've got a good guy. We'll, we'll get it done. Okay. okay? I appreciate that. Thank Great. You. Um, well, what, let me just ask. Can we figure out when we can get you, you, you guys to commit to a vote? What, what we're going to do, no, because we haven't. You, the walk's going to happen. Mr. Prady's going to submit some additional stuff. We, we I. I, we can't commit, but we're looking at our January 9th meeting as probably a good time, but we can't promise because we don't have all the information yet. Okay. 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 Well, what, can we just Thank you. talk about what the information is? Well, so I, all, I think, Mr. Preddy, are you comfortable? There's a well, there's nine pages of stuff here, and that's why, not, and that's why I said that we, what we need to do is just go one by one. Uh, this is done, this doesn't apply. Yeah, I'm more than happy to sit down and meet with you if there's any right. questions, to devote some time to making sure this thing right. is through. Um, so if they if they contend that most of the items are done, can they sit in the next two weeks and we're just here again in two weeks? I mean, well, there's an issue with the wetlands. Like you're not going to have. A, I don't think you're going to have anything from them to say there's no problem by the 12th. <laughs> but I think they they. Well, my understanding, it's on. They're going to be on their agenda for the 12th. Yeah. So. What's on their agenda That this is on the, they have to go through wetlands now? I'm put through Why? wetlands, but the Why fact there are. Why is when we don't have a wetlands issue? Um, I, this, this not my call. Yeah, it is your call. You <laughs> it's, not it's not my call. It's not my call. Now, by state law, we require, we cannot approve an application until wetlands is signed off. That's a state law. I, 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 it was something was signed off years ago. You've got a new application right now, okay? It's that it, it, I know you keep saying that, but it's a different application. It's expanding, whatever. So that's what they need to do. So, but but we're, that, we're, we'll continue this to our January 9th meeting, and hopefully, if it's all wrapped up, then we can vote. Okay? It's just another expense for that, you know, Jim, which is time. I understand. Okay, so uh, 
we're continuing the, this item to our January 9th meeting, which brings us to, so thank you very much, and you're getting close, guys. Um, the next item is, do we, do you want, uh, we got one more public <coughs> hearing. Item number 10 is the uh, Justin Gargano, Thimble Island Brewery, zoning re regulation text amendment. Is, do we have, is the applicant here on that? So, uh, Justin Gargano, I'm the uh, CEO and one of the owners of Thimble Island Brewing Company. Um, we were look, as you guys know, we've been here uh, probably every December, January, the past couple of years, trying to find a way to get food into our facility. Over the years, we have found that food trucks have become less and less <laughs> reliable, and they cycle quite a bit on the approval list with uh, East Shore Health. Uh, so considering that we also serve alcohol, it's a liability for us, so we would like to always have something on hand to sell to people. Um, so I reached out to Harry to find out uh, what our best option was going forward at this point, so considering we've had, had a lot of success in the past of trying to rezone our location as a restaurant instead of retail outlet, which is what we're considered at this point when there are, um, our current facility, which is where we serve a beer out of, as well as uh, our manufacturing facility um, as well. And his recommendation, and per something that I brought to his attention, is that um, our counterpart in town, Stony Creek Brewery, was granted a um, accessory use of allowing for the uh, food preparation of on -site, uh, and on-site consumption, any food and beverage manufacturer. So we're looking for the exact same treatment as well so that we could um, have that use added to the IG2 zone, which is where we're located, uh, where then we can then fall through doing a, a site plan um, submission where we could then put in potentially a pizza oven and a kitchen as well to serve our patrons. Thank you. Harry, do you want to summarize this? Yeah, I just have a short report. Um, the exact language is on the front here. Um, so it add a new accessory use um, as a site plan in the uh, IG2 and IG1 zones. That would, uh, the exact words are food preparation for on-site consumption in conjunction with a manufacturing facility that produces a food or beverage that is also sold at retail for on-site consumption. So we looked at the wording, and something that would be fairly narrow that would address the request. Um, there's nothing in terms of the usual, um, um, for example, looking at the plan of conservation development and the comprehensive plan of zoning. I mean, there was really nothing specific in the plan of conservation development about this. I mean, there's some general language encouraging expansion of local businesses and small business development. Um, the comprehensive plan, um, the commission also needs to find its accordance with that, which is basically the zoning regulations as they've developed over time and how developments occurred in the area. Um, the only thing I think that really makes sense there is that restaurants are allowed in the IG too, so it's not a use that's prohibited. So if consumption of food is part of you know what happens in the industrial zones. Um, we did send this up because it would affect potentially some areas in the coastal boundary. We sent it up to DEP. Uh, they submitted a letter stating there's no conflict between this proposed zoning regulation amendment and the Coastal Management Act. So on the second page of the report, just provided you the usual considerations for action. Um, should you choose to approve, you would need to find that you have considered the plan of conservation development and that your decision is in accordance with the comprehensive plan and pick an effective date. There is an automatic one in the regulations of 16 days after, but usually we give ourselves a couple extra days to make sure we've done everything that needs to be done in terms of process. Um, so that is essentially it. <coughs> Now, the, it's defined as an accessory use, which means that the food aspect wouldn't be the primary use in the site. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Any questions from anyone? No, it looks pretty straightforward. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I just would group. note that um, this was site plan use, so uh, there is provision of the regs that will allow you to avoid the need for a site plan application if the whole site was in conformance with its last site plan approval, but I know there's a few things that aren't in alignment out there, like landscaping islands and so forth. So I guess the choice is to 
bring the site back into conformance or to come in and ask the commission for site plan approval, in which case you'll have to go back and forth on if the changes that so I think the property can be approved. Yeah, that there's a, uh, this, there was, the parking lot was redone, not, yeah. not, not by us, but. Yeah, I understand. It was it's just, uh, right. it's adjusted from what the plan was originally, so I think the site plan would just seem to be resubmitted. Yeah, we can look at that and what meets the regs and doesn't, with there's ways around that or not. But I just okay. want to let you know, it's not just the reg and then yep, you yep, get I'm it. aware. Yep, this is process. step one. Okay. okay. Uh, I'd like to get this step two as fast as possible. Sure, I totally understand. <laughs> Any no, okay. <laughs> we'll uh, open this up to the public. Any public <coughs> members of the public wish to comment? <coughs> Terry Maraskett, uh, Chairman of Econ Economic Development. Um, we, uh, I also brought this up at our most recent meeting, and the Commission was in favor of, uh, of this. And um, I also happen to be a neighbor. I'm, my lighting showroom is in Nine Business Park Drive, right down the street. And I very often go by Stony Creek, I mean, uh, the Mill Island Brewery. And sorry, <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, I, do, I go by there, too. I, I drive by both of them. I, <laughs> yeah. We better uh, stop by this one. <laughs> But, I mean, I never see any issues or problems um, during the summer. There's families there and, and whatnot. So, I, 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 on a personal um, aspect, I, I support it as well. Um, and to my recollection, years ago, I believe it was Building 11 on Business Park. There was a restaurant uh, in there. So, it's, um, it is something that has, has been done before. So, uh, it's my two cents. Great. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to comment? Not the applicant any any further comments? Any questions from the commission? Okay, we can close this matter then as a public hearing, and it's probably something we can take up a little later. Okay, um, guys, a little we're we're, we're going to take a five minute <coughs> recess. <coughs> so. Okay.
We're going to, uh, I get to use my hammer. We're going to call this meeting back to order. And proceeding with our agenda, we have our minutes from our November 21st meeting that were circulated in a packet. And uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to review them. Uh, I got the draft ones. Yeah, that's the, the draft minutes. They're all draft. Is there a, if, if you had a chance to review them, is someone want to make an appropriate motion regarding the November 21st minutes. I'll make that motion to approve. John makes a motion to approve the and Fred seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any correspondence, Harry? Yes, there are a couple of items. <clears throat> uh, cell tower, cell tower, 
So one about cell tower, we, I think we had two previous uh, communications about this, the 123 Pine Orchard, um, and basically this is swapping out antennas and so forth. Um, <clears throat> we got a notice of non-compliance for two Paulson Road, and this is from the DEP, and um, has to do with a seawall and a concrete ramp. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, I can forward you the information. I have to read it in more detail. I'm vaguely aware of the situation they've been investigating down there. Okay. Thanks. With that, let's uh, review some of the mat public hearing matters that we may be able to take up. The first one was item number one, Mr. Kustner, Three Elms Road. Uh, we had, Harry did circulate to us some proposed conditions if we were so inclined. I think the issues in this one related to uh, the landscaping, I, I think it was mainly just the landscaping, right? It, it, uh, the landscaping, I think the applicant was objecting to the last proposed condition, which was the uh, number six. Right, all oh, right, the landscaping and the outdoor storage of boats. Okay, right. so well, with respect to the landscaping, there was, um, Again, I think the debate was the there's an abutting neighbor who wanted additional arbor bites in the right. area of the boat storage. Right. That's what it sounded like. Um, and I think um, right now on the plan are these things called compact Japanese hollies, which are 30 inches high. And I don't know, Marcy, maybe you can help out. Um, my recollection was that um, I wasn't really clear the abutting property owner wanted arborvitaes because that was part of the agreement he this agreement or non-agreement with uh, mr custer well i think that i mean the they've lower got a, plantings weren't they part of just the whole dumpster application um they were part of the zba um with the we sent lot. some comments to the zba and they adopted them as part of their um but they, yes but my, my well i'm trying to understand the relationship between what was done previously with that front area, this said agreement, whether that agreement is, you know, the legal aspect about mm -hmm. whether there was an agreement, is it legally binding, is it not legally binding? We're talking you about know. the We can green. pay attention to that. Yeah, 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 that's right. I think we're that's the thing we need to worry about. But if yeah. our requirements and our, <clears throat> our regs would suggest that there should be a planted buffer at that right. rear property line. Right. So, if a neighbor is contesting that, I mean, I don't think we well, should. I think be it's a requirement. That. It's a requirement. The regulations, right? Yeah, I think. So, that. how far do you take it down? Do you take it all the way into the boat storage area, or not? Well, that's the whole rear property yeah. line. Right. You so, know, but I'm, it seems to me that there's area to move the boat storage because it's it's a bit of an undefined open area. He's right. expressed that he's going to be moving. So there's areas to still store the number of boats. I'm not well, promoting that we restrict that. But well, well, that's one of the issues. Is where do you? I I think the whole purpose of of this is to we want them to show the area where the boats would be stored, and they should store it in the area where they're going to be stored, and that's the whole purpose of putting it on the plan. Well, now, I, I still don't know how close that was to the property and whether you could. Oh, was, he showed he showed a place where the boats are going to be stored permanently. And yeah. what was the? And, and how close to the property boats, line was that? You know, that were more transient. You know, right. be left around the yard. And I think that's fine. Yeah, right, but how close to the property line was that edge, and is there room to put a row of arbor oh, or not? Yeah, That's no. what I'm getting at. Where right. you have to shift it. I don't think there's room. He's got uh, permission for 18-foot boats. Yeah. I mean, I find uh, that the angle that they're showing it's going to be difficult to get them he's in. He's going to have to get them on an angle to get them to fit. It's I mean, going to be tough already. On the other angle. Yeah. <clears throat> right, which sort of makes the whole idea of dedicating that area for boat storage right kind of silly because if you need to get to the third boat in and you take the other two boats out and wow. take one boat out put the other two boats in to get that boat out I mean it, it, it's not like you're storing um, boxes of something An I know, foot I know but that's, that's why it would be the that. permanent storage place yeah but that's not you what know, I heard they wouldn't be moved <laughs> having run marinas I, I gotta tell you working with limited space, you do things like that. Um, I, if we're worried about headlights and lights bothering the neighbor, 
we have the section that goes up to where the boat storage is, where the hollies are. If we want to put <coughs> some taller trees there to block lights, let's make that a condition. I thought the hollies were to block the lights. The hollies were to block the How lights. How tall are yeah. they? 30 well, they're 30, 30 inches. inches. And it's I don't two think foot they. Six, and it's just above the headlights. Yeah, so they don't. Depending on how far away the headlights are from the actual hollies, they're going to. Right, right. Yeah. And where the windows are relative. I mean, you have to you know, look at the it's angle. a trade off. I mean, you're going to block that side of the house, but I, I wasn't clear, frankly, on what he would prefer. I got the sense that it was just that the, the, the site is much higher than his, yeah. that the building's a, a substantial building. Six he feels that he's losing enough. his privacy. Yeah. So a vegetative something would you know and there are three large pines coming out to facilitate that so that's gonna yeah. you know open up the area you know i, I think it's a, a question of you know what's suitable landscaping and what's required and what's appropriate i'm not saying like i'm getting tired personally of seeing everything lined along property lines of our providers because yeah. we can't get along with our neighbors you know i mean there's lots of ways to Create interesting buffers. I don't think they have to be continuous across the property line. If you need room for boat storage or something, you know, includes yeah. it. But I just think that you know, I'm just making a general statement. You know, this is what we're seeing all the time, and I'd like to see it stop. <laughs> you know, and, and to be a little bit more thoughtful in terms of. Do we have the plan? The plan I can bring the plan up. I'll put it up. Yeah. I'm sorry, the public hearing's closed, so we can't actually take any more testimony. Actually, I want to see the aerial. <clears throat> Don't get to get it a little over there, so it's you know Henry is just yeah, lecturing me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's not a lot of space between the boats and the building, and that's going to be really tricky. Those last three boats to get in there. I mean, in fact, I think they're probably going to be coming at the opposite angle. <coughs> but, yeah, I think the the issues are. And then you've got his house off site right by those. Yeah, his house. That's what his. I mean, my house, it's, it's two, it's going to be looking over, so I want something tall to block the view. His response was, look, this isn't, we're not going to inhabit right. this. You know, yeah. And there's it's just a work area, right. and, and, and it, there's a problem with this. I think the, so if we don't put any additional, I think that's, John, you raised that point. That, that, um, that would, if you put any plantings back here, I think it would be difficult with the with the storage, which he has the right to do. I like the idea of having the place. This is where the permanent storage will yeah, be. Out of the way. If he wants to put temporary stuff, that's not permanent. Whatever, you know, that's a whatever. That's not. You know, Chuck, whatever. point to the end of the house, offsite down. The, what? Left. This way. Down. That. Yeah. That's. And does that corner end right there? His house ends right there, to the right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the corner end of his house. Right. Yeah, so I think we extend that, these. To me, is a logical, right. you know, if he wants to have that his view from his house blocked a little bit into, right. you know, I don't see any issue why you can't fit some intermittent vertical elements. They don't all have to be the same species, but you can do something interesting there that doesn't have to take a lot of his property away. That could still accomplish that. 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 That's the question. To me, that's the issue. If once we, we're going to not put stuff here, we extend the landscaping all the way to here. They're agreeable to that. The question is what type of landscaping it is. That's why we have the clause about a landscape architect doing plan. Well, you've got a condition yeah. that says with proposed size, species, and number of plantings noted, submitted to me to review it. So in that area between the holly and the boats. I mean, I can bang something I'm out sure you could. and volunteer something, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not sure if I can legally do that. But, yeah. you know, well, I mean, there, it's, we, we're, that's why that's in the regulation, so that we're being provided with that right. trade's perspective. Are, are we good with this? Right. With these hollies? <clears throat> that's what the ZBA required, and it shields the parking, right? I mean, it seems to me you th there's a view. To, you don't want too tall, because if you that's why I'm saying if you if a landscape architect's going to look at where the windows are in the house, right. and if the, the owner's request, he's going to well, put you know a vert maybe a tree 
that's going to grow up and block the view if that you know but there should be some communication and some design applied you know it's not an engineered solution it's a different kind of design solution and that's no, just no, not no. happening well I does mean, does the condition allow flexibility for changes that you approve it yeah. does between the hollies and the boats I mean, you can change to c roman numeral i i mean double i um was this change the proposed compact holly to emerald green arbor vitae you can say either leave the compact japanese holly if you think that makes sense where it's proposed i think it needs a or you a want somebody else to look at it it's agreeable to the the both parties because of this set agreement. Okay. I mean, I just well, don't think that they. Well, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get them to agree. To get that's to the it. problem. Yeah. We're yeah, not, I, don't I mean, I think we're going to have to decide what's reasonable. Yeah. We're going to always modify it. I think it come in and I can make a modification to it now because we changed the regulations. I, would just so. keep it, I wouldn't name varieties. I would so, say, you know, variety suitable to provide screening of headlights and some visual buffer to the neighbors or something that's right. general. Right that they can then work out and, and come to an agreement and whether that happens in a different form, you know. Um, well, what it, what it boils down to process-wise is leaving it with the applicant to propose something and right. you're basically would be it. leaving it to me to decide. Well, I'll, right. yeah, yeah, have I mean, him propose yeah. something yeah. that's okay. going to be suitable and I'll help you review it. I okay. Know. Uh, so I could change the wording to change the proposed compact Japanese holly to planting suitable revised screening for the budding property. For headlights and screening for the but up to up to the area of the, the boat storage or approach. Right. We we don't want to phrase it so that the budding property owner gets a veto. I mean, I, I, I we, we got to say we got to. Or in consideration of. Well, yeah, in consideration of or something. But but I I I think it's got to be. Your choice. Or we, we have to make the decision. Yeah. But they have to propose it. <laughs> I think the applicant has to propose it. And I'm, I'm happy to listen to whoever wants to give me a phone call um, and try to work something out. Yeah, I'm happy to give you a call too. <laughs> so that's but we know what the function is to. Yeah. yeah. So but if I may just simply change the proposed compact Japanese holly to plant things suitable to provide screening. get rid of the specifics I mean to be approved by you should have to be it, it that's included in the okay. preamble of it to okay. be approved by me basically so okay. yeah it's sort of all there and then there's uh, condition six which I mean if you're sounds I'm not totally clear but it sounds like that's the area where boats are prone to be stored but they could be temporarily be at other locations on the property right so I can either take this out and say the site plan says they're permanently stored there. And well, we add the word or... permanent before the word outside. Okay. Yeah, just add the word permanent. Perfect. Should I ask you a question about that? Okay. A clarification. Um, lady in the back raised an issue. She said the way it read, I think I was a little confused about it too. Um, her question was uh, the applicants allowed to store eight boats. And it said eight boats and trailers. And her question was, and I, I, I don't know what the answer is, but the mass, is that is that eight boats? How about the boats on the trailer? Can you still store eight more trailers? Or, so so it's not eight things on the property. There's sixteen on the property. I and mean, that's what her question was. But I don't know if we ever got an answer. My my understanding was, you could have eight outside eight boats. Four trailers. How much are on the trailer? Outside storage, so but not inside. You could have another if you could stick some in the garage. You know, we. Well, no, we but if you have if you have eight boats on trailers and they're stored, yeah. Can you also have eight trailers that have nothing on them? Oh, the distinction between yes. boats and trailers. Yes. I don't know the answer to that. There was well, no, well I mean, the, the, on the property. Yeah, the, the regs. I mean, when you're talking about the one, and there was the, the section cited as 640. And it says boat trailers and boats are allowed in all zones, require no zoning permit, provided that no more than one boat and slash or one boat trailer is stored on any lot. But okay. what is their nonconformity? I they think the nonconformity was they had eight boats, and the ZBA 
did they interpret all the discussion was boats so there's not there's no okay. mention of boat trailers so then they get so one they got grandfather for eight I, boats I mean, that's whatever the could, could be on or off a trailer <laughs> right but it's right. Eight, eight boats right right it's eight boats, and I guess it's one trailer. Yeah, yeah that's what I got. Yeah. Eight boats, eight trailers. Cool. Well. Um, yeah, so, so, I mean, ultimately, that's the ZBA determination because the regs don't allow eight. The regs right. allow one. Right. 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 One boat and one trailer. So right. they got eight because they have non they have this grandfather. Right. And I don't know if that grandfather had included trailers or not it sounded like it didn't but I don't I don't know that was their interpretation that was a whole separate proceedings it's not for us to determine that uh, yeah so um, I mean, it makes sense for it to be the boat in the boat on the trailer so right to me yeah I and I understood her question also <coughs> can you also have do that include inside or outside I don't mm. think it includes inside I think it doesn't you know, include it, inside right so right. if you can stick another boat in the in the thing, and they find that. He could have, have nine boats. or whatever. He Ten. could have eight boats in the building, too. Right. Yeah. It's so stacked. It's, it's yeah. a lot of boats right. for right. one guy. <laughs> well, right. that's kind It's of, just the outside. I was trying to understand that. Okay. Okay, so we added the word permanent to outside. We're going to change uh, condition 2C2. Roman numeral 2, yeah. What's two. that going to read? Change the proposed compact Japanese holly to planting suitable to provide screening. Screening for what? To adjacent property, mm. headlights suitable to provide. How, yeah, we, we should give more. How, how do you know what is fulfills that? I mean, that, you know. well, I think that's going to be where it boils down to something proposed. How tall? I'll try to speak to all parties and. I mean, the, the compact. It could be right what they've got now. So it could be. Um, could be what? What's wrong with what they have now? Why don't we like it? Um, well, based on the information submitted and that agreement or non-agreement was submitted into the application record and a requested or required um, emerald green opera vitae instead of the the holly. But I, now, I yeah, I, I thought it was more on the boats where the boats were permanent. Uh, when I read it, it was all the way up. You could put, you know. I know, but I'm just saying what the agreement itself said. So that was the comment to me. I, I took that as commentary from the applicant. And it said starting right at um, at uh, Thimble Islands Road all the way up. Right, but when he went, I thought he went and stood and pointed to the plan, and he was no. That is, he made a specific comment about the barn and right. lack of privacy. That, yeah. That's why he wanted the arborvitae yeah. in that location yeah. for privacy there. And if we ruled that out, I didn't hear him saying that I want arborvitae more so over there, even though th there is a house point over there. But he didn't. He didn't mention that. Well, that's. What I'm curious about is if he even has review. Yeah. You know, what's his view out that house, and does that go across I, the street to the I don't know. Or is that, but, but but his you know. what what he had said to us was that he was concerned with it by the boat storage area. Right. Yeah, and you might be able to put one nice large evergreen tree. It looks like on the Google <sighs> Maps that there's a, a tree just off the corner of that boat storage anyway that might give him some separation and you know. I, you know, I, I, you know, I think we're spending too much time yeah. on this. Yeah. So what do we say? What, how well, how about this? Down? How about this? Um, all right. Addition, alternative wording. Reconsider and, if necessary, um, change the proposed compact Japanese holly to planting suitable to provide um, acceptable screening. Yeah, I mean, his view sheds. I mean, this is just words. Water. He's not going to want something blocked in his view shed. Right, he's way. not going to want something yeah. too tall. So, so yeah. his issue is so he may that be happy way. With and, it. and it may have been masking well, not then, wanting to have boat storage there. So, so why don't we just we leave, leave, him, leave him there and, and just continue it to the thing? And that might be fine. I just want to check with him, basically. Right. Okay, so then re, re, what you're proposing? Uh, reconsider, and if necessary, change the proposed compact Japanese holly to planting suitable to provide acceptable screening. Uh, approved by who? It's by him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding the bag apparently. Okay. Do, do you have 
the extension of the trees. Yeah, that's in there. Yeah. That's on. That's the one right above it. And that may be so all that's that, necessary. Yeah, so that one is a 10-foot planting strip should be extended along the rear property line to the east of the proposed hollies. I think it's it really is. Really, that's yeah. all that's necessary. We're thinking this one. Well, I'm just saying fill in the gap. That was what, yes. and that was, I think, the comment. Fill in the gap between the plant things on the left there and the boats so on the right. So we just fill in the gap and forget It could the be stuff. Forget something the following the lines yeah, of what you suggested. Too. Doesn't but have to be a line. Use our providers in the gap and leave the holly to the left. I mean, it doesn't that have could be, to be That could be it. That could be fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Well, you, you get a little flexibility there. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll add a little flexibility if, if maybe something happens. <coughs> so maybe it might help. Okay, so then the, the I, th I think the other, you added the word permanent to number six. Yep. And, we, and we're adding number two. Reread it again to 2C. 2C uh, Roman numeral 2 would be reconsider and, if necessary, change the proposed compact Japanese holly to planting suitable to provide acceptable screening. Okay. Just. The intention being to provide our buildings in the gap. Maybe. Well, that's right above it. That's already above it. So. That's above? Yeah, That's so there's two C Roman numeral I. Uh, ten foot wide planting strips should be extended on the rear property line, basically from where the hollies are on the left, to end it where the boat storage starts. Right, right, okay. And okay. That could so be anything, but it could be upvites. Is so I want to make a motion to approve the application with the findings and conditions in the uh, in the memo that Harry has provided again with the changes we just discussed regarding the C2, the, the planning suitable for screening, and then adding word permit to number six. So moved. So moved by Fred. So second. Second by John. <coughs> Further discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, done. Okay, that's approved. The next one, I think, uh, Brand Fund, we're continuing. Uh, we closed the hearing. We're not, we don't have a resolution on that yet. Summit Place is off. The Leeds Island Road is being continued to January 9th. Nuzzles are being continued. And then Gargano's, right. the zoning text amendment. I think we can do that. Yeah, that's ready to go, right? That's ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't need trees. Yeah. They don't need trees. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so we have the, is someone want to make a motion to approve the proposed zoning regulation amendment with the finding that it's consistent with the plan of conservation and development and in accordance with the comprehensive plan of development with an effective date of, what do you recommend? How about Christmas Day? December 25th. <laughs> so, so moved by Joe, is there a second? Second, second by Marcy. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think that is it for for those. What else is on our agenda? Yes. Uh, we have um, 165. Item number one, 165 uh, Main <coughs> Street. That's the Curry one. That's across from Shelley's. Coming back. We have a public hearing on January 9th. Yes. I have number two, we have the Vigliotti construction, the estate of Dan Crosgrove, resubdivision. That's also a, a public hearing on our January 9th meeting. Right. That brings us to new business. Uh, item number one is a CAM application, 16 Halls Point Road, which you just received, and you recommend tabling? Um, I do. Tabling to January 9th, we just got in a couple days ago. Okay, so that is, we'll take that one up on January 9th. Item number two is a time request extension for 17 21 North Brantford Road. What's that about, Harry? Um, there was an original approval um, back in 2013 uh, and that was extended on basically December, well, December last year, December 6th. Uh, it was set to expire on December 20th of this year because um, the original application approval expired on December 20th of last year. So they are asking for um, another year. They did not really give me a reason, but... Um, what was the project? 
the project is, uh, I think they were kind of um, commercial, commercial condos. There were three buildings, one behind the other, um, just as you're going up North Brantford Road on the right, I believe. Oh, yeah. I remember that. This, it was a lot of state highway work in the last couple of years. It's yeah. one year to do what? To complete the work? To pull a permit? To do what? Just complete the work. Okay. So I don't know if that's adequate, but that's what they asked for. Okay. So that they're at the end of the five years now, right? Is that no, the five year ended in 2018, so they've got they're one year into the second five year, and this would oh. get, take them in the year okay. two of so the they second got five one. year. Okay, great. Hey, one clear. So, hey, one, is there a motion to approve the one year extension to complete the work for the 1721 North Brantford Road special exception? Move. Moved by Fred. Second, John. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, time extension granted. Item number three. This is uh, Secondino Bittersweet Partners special exception for a laboratory office that just came in. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. It's still in front of wetlands. Um, they will be discussing at their meeting on the 12th. Um, I guess I would suggest at this point that perhaps the commission consider uh, delegating to myself and the chair the actual setting of the public hearing date. So I think um, that date would depend on what's going on at wetlands. Okay. So it could be as early as January, or there may be a reason to delay it further, okay. and not start the clock until we know, you know, we're going to be able to have the wetlands approval in place. Is there a motion to accept and defer the scheduling of the public hearing, uh, or to delegate that to Harry, who will consult with me about that? Mm -hmm. Motion by John. Second by Fred. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. And just so you know, I mean, I did discuss that. I would be requesting the commission to do that, and the applicant was very comfortable with that. The applicant's representatives have talked to them today. Okay. <clears throat> um, there are two um, items I would... Well, let me ask a question of my staff, though. Uh, did we get the, um, the Hampton in? We did. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, this was not received early enough to be added to the agenda or to be automatically accepted for the record. However, we did receive an application for the Hampton Inn very late this afternoon. So I would um, ask the commission to consider adding that to the agenda, uh, not for receipt, but to again, defer to staff and the chair setting the public hearing date. Do they need a wetlands or what, what do they need? Um, they have gotten their variances from the ZBA and I think the wetlands my understanding is there's no new work they're proposing, so I don't think they need any approval because they're staying within an existing paved area. Okay. There is, I think, a wetlands to the north of it. What's the application for? Um, they're going to take down the Brantford Motel, and they're going to construct a Hampton Inn, oh. which is a Hilton Hotel product. With the height question on that, yeah. I think. Yeah. Remember the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. yeah, so that will give us some flexibility in uh, scheduling it. Is there a motion to add this, this to the agenda? Second. And Okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. Very nice. <laughs> All those in favor? All right. All right. Okay. All right. Done. Okay. All right. Uh, we have an item five um, to the new business, which is um, a request for establishment of a bond at 21 Lomatra Lane. And I have a memorandum from the zoning enforcement officer um, stating that the developer has requested uh, a bond for the outstanding landscaping on the site. Um, and they proposed a bond amount of $4,000, and she agrees that that is an acceptable amount and recommends the commission approve the establishment of a bond of that amount. Sir, so you have to uh, add it to the agenda and approve it. Is a motion to add that to the agenda and approve that bond request? So moved. Se second. Motion made second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Anything else? On That's it. New um, business. New okay. business. <coughs> okay. We have uh, election of officers. Um, but I believe we need to have all regular members here. That's correct. Okay. Did so you have any luck, Joe? Fred? Oh, well, I sent out two emails to all the members, including you. Right. And I never got a response from um, you. But I, <laughs> I responded. <laughs> yeah, I did. I just brought you your first email. Right? Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. I never I did. got it. Yeah. Well, anyway, the only person I got a response was from Joe. And uh, well, it's claimed that he responded. But anyway, I, I the answer is no. I mean, I did it, but I never got any answer. Okay. I, and I assumed that the um, the fact that no one sent me anything back was that they loved the job that both you and Mars did. Oh, thank you. So uh, <laughs> I don't see why we should just leave it that way. Okay. 
Are you willing to continue as secretary? I should say no, just to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll do it. Okay. All right. So we can formally do it in January. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll stay on if no one wants to. Yeah. I, I, I think, think you know, Paul does a fine job reading in my absence. Good to give some other people some responsibilities. Okay. So that'll be in January because we can't do it until. <coughs> Okay, anything else for planner's report? Um, I'm going to uh, defer to the assistant planner and see if there's anything he wants to add. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be resigning uh, come January 10th. You so, are? Yes. Uh, on to different things. Not retiring. Uh, we'll see, but anyway. So. That's not good news. No. <laughs> We better learn how to streamline these applications with one one planner. <laughs> right. right. We're working on all that. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's been a great 15 years, Rich. We, you know, yeah. we've certainly appreciated it, and you've got a lot of wisdom and uh, experience and complete change. Yeah. Hope it. Uh, I've enjoyed it. And yeah. It's a great time. So. Yeah. And I hope it uh, goes well. Whatever, whatever it ends up. Yeah, thanks. Right. In your next endeavor. Right. Right. Uh, Rich, what, what, Rich, what's your last name? The 10th, the 10th of January. Of January. Yeah. So we'll see you on the 9th or not? Yeah, well, Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you might be in the audience. Uh, right. oh. You're still welcome to come if you, if you want to enjoy the show. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we can, if I can be of help on that one. Yeah, you don't get free admission anymore, though. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Gary, anything else? Okay, so motion to adjourn. Take a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs>